in 2016. And Phil's commentary is boring, and that's why people don't want to watch the playthroughs of the stream. Bullshit! My views are like this. If I had to choose between the world and PewDiePie, I would choose PewDiePie! The videos just don't get attention anymore. Because the bottom line is it hurts me, and it hurts my business. Goodbye! Oh, oh my god! And now... From the heart of Washington State... There were many things that I wanted to improve by moving to Washington State, okay? The YouTuber with a nine-year legacy. But they'll all hype each other up about it, right? They hype each other up. Lies the worst hated gamer on the planet. No, I didn't. What the fuck are you talking about, you stupid idiot? The Secret Life of DSP Presents. Because that makes no fucking sense. None! Top 10 Worst DSP Gaming 2017 Moments. Fuck this! No, I'm not gonna put one up with this shit. No more. Coming up on the Top 10 Worst DSP 2017 Moments. For me, it means I can't pay my bills. Alright? Why am I poisoning? Why am I toxic? Fuck him. I'm not, no, I'm not playing. I'm not playing. No, 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 no. And in this video, it said he looked at stream chat 2,000 times. Nada, nilch, nihil. I'm ready for my apology now. So I don't know how to take that. You guys are going to believe this. My fucking OBS fucked up again. Me. Free. Good day, mates. Thank you for checking out the Top 10 Worst DSP Gaming 2017 Moments video. If you love the video, remember to give this video a like, subscribe to this channel, comment below, and share this video on the social medias. With that all said, shall we begin? Let's get it on! Number 10. Welcome to Salty City. Special shout out to YouTubers talking shit about me in vlog videos, uh, apparently yesterday and today, calling me a rage quitter when I've never rage quit ever in my entire entirety of existence on YouTube. Never once rage quit, ever, but apparently people think I'm a rage quitter. Rage, quit, salt, delete. Yakitori, there's no money cheat in this game. There's none. There, it, it, it. Of all the things you put in the game, you don't put a money cheat? When money is the required thing to fucking get past the game, then you can't... It, the, the required cheat you would want isn't even in the fucking game. Scarface. Oh my god. Pull up fucking guns out of nowhere. Start firing. I quit. I'm done. Look, I can't even do anything else. The supplier here is only a tiny supplier. I quit. This disc... You see this fucking piece of garbage disc? <laughs> Fuck it. It's gonna stay back there forever. I'm never fucking picking it up again. Don't ever ask me to play that fucking game again. Well, that's it for Scarface. Don't ever ask me to play it again. If it's ever nominated in any kind of an event, a poll or whatever, I'm eliminating it. I'm never playing that fucking game again. I have no desire to ever play it. It is horrible. The end game right there is complete and utter trash. And there's not even a cheat to get the money you need to beat the game, so... Fuck the game developers of Scarface, you guys are fucking assholes. Dishonored 2 DLC. Yes, I had it on the light when I pressed the button, it overshoots the light and lands on the ground. That's my fault. I fucking, I'm really hating this at this point. I seriously am, it's not fun at all. I honestly guys, I think this is the final session of this. I think I'm gonna finish this stream and I'm done. I'm tapping out. It's fucking boring, man. Rage? Where do you see rage? It's so boring. What do you guys think I should I'm done with this? I'm seriously, I'm not playing this no more. I'm fucking fuck this. Here, here you go. Here's what I think of this fucking game. Get the fuck out of here. Terrible. Terrible, monotonous garbage. $30. Yes, Bookie One was like. What? How much was it? That was thirty dollars. Injustice two. Who's 
fight. He tried to mix me up with a couple of the other Oh, that sounds good. Look at that. What? Oh, fuck this. Putting the controller down. Done. I'm not playing this guy. This is ridiculous. What a waste of a man. He hits me, he's gonna do like 80 fucking 90% more damage than he's supposed to. Just fucking win. Congratulations. Congratulations, you're great. You're a great player. Everyone, a standing ovation, everyone. Standing ovation! Yes, you're so good. What an idiot. Fucking waste of my fucking time. Can I get a real match, please? The game sucks online. The game is garbage, and honestly, honestly, I'm just totally done with it. I, I don't need it anymore. I'm not gonna buy any fucking DLCs for a game that plays like shit online. Delete! 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 The game is shit now, and I'm done with it. Injustice 2, good game, peace out. On to better things. Fuck that piece of shit. Persona 5. Oh, Sukasa! Oh, he got my nipples up in a tizzy. Today, I received a copyright strike against DSP Gaming. Not a claim, uh, like for example, a content ID claim where they take ad revenue or not blocking the video or muting it. An actual copyright strike against DSP Gaming in regards to a takedown notice for two videos in my over 300 part playthrough of Persona 5. The two videos in question, parts 307 and 325, are me fusing personas in the Velvet Room. As of right now, I'm, I'm no, announcing this, I already said it on Twitter, the Persona 5 playthrough is over at this point. Um, it seems like Atlas is never going to lift their ban of the no, no, November 19th uh, deadline anyway. Uh, at least they haven't, and it's now been, what, over two months since the game released, so who knows? No more Persona 5 playthrough. By the way, I'm not going to play any more games from Atlas ever again. I just have to adhere to my, my guns now, and that sucks to think. Super Mario Odyssey, Dark Side Kingdom. See, now I don't, I don't even want to take my time to do it anymore because I'm so bored redoing this. And I'm just rushing through and I'm, I'm making mistakes because it's fucking boring as fuck. Fuck this. Time to use the frog glitch. Fuck this. Stupid game. Did it. There we go. Now don't. I got no wiggle the controller. Complain to Miyamoto. <laughs> A certain gaming journalist, I will not name names did a early review of the game and whined and complained and stamped their feet and cried all over fucking social media and the internet stating the game was pay to win that basically the end of the game is an impossible grind because at the end of the game you need to amass an orc army in order to get to the final battle of the game shadow of war at Fuck a fucking spider got me or something. Now he's enraged by Frost. What I really want to do is boil you in oil. This guy will not die. I can't get away. I'm done. I'm dead. They wouldn't let me do nothing, dude. It's over. Yeah, this fucking sucks. It fucking sucks. It's too chaotic. It's not even fun. So I can't, you know, there's never a counter icon on the screen to counter any of the attacks. It's garbage. It fucking sucks. Region lost. I'm done. I'm done playing. I really am. That's it. That's the end of the game. The game sucks. The fucking Act 4 is complete garbage made to fucking uh, make money. It has nothing to do with the actual game. The game ends at Act 3. That's the end of the game. Act 4 is a complete waste of time that no one should ever play. So I'm done with it. I played the game. I beat the story, I got my gold trophy for beating the story, which I did, and I'm done with this game now. Goodbye, it's a shame, it really is a shame that WB Games really ruined you, because you are one of the best games of this year, but the fact that your entire fourth act is a money grind is garbage, and I'm not going to play it anymore. You can go fuck yourself, WB Games. I'm not doing it. I'm not wasting my time. As you can see, I've got many other games to play. I don't have to waste any more time on your piece of shit act four, and that... 
concludes my playthrough of Shadow of War. I gave it a shot. The end's a piece of shit. Fuck you, WB Games, for ruining the game because it actually is a quite a good game, but you have to actually act and ignore the final act that doesn't belong in the game. Majestic 7 says, I won't delete Infinite, though. I won't. <laughs> I'll delete that right fucking now. That game is terrible. I'm not playing that again. Delete! 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 Someone says, oh, Destiny 2 is still there. Will I be going back to the game? Here we go. Delete. God, Delete. Thank you for reminding me that I'm going to need all this hard drive space Delete. next week. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Number nine. We all have our good and bad days. <laughs> oh my god. Ugh. Seven days of bad luck. The next day, I got a message from Machinima saying, and it was from the same guy, so again, it went against my wishes. We have decided to execute our right to end uh, a partnership with you on all of your, your channels. Yeah, pretty crazy that this is it. I've seen it, you know, I saw it in people's hands and you're like, oh, it's kind of small. Never does it look like it would even fit in a box like this. Pretty nuts. I don't know if it's like really packed in there, crammed in there or what. It's like a small tablet. It's like, it's like a little galaxy tab or something, like a really mi mini galaxy tab or some shit. Look at this. This is my setup video for the Switch, the Nintendo Switch. What I'm going to attempt to do is make room for it here. I don't know where I'm going to put it. I got a PS4 controller back there. I didn't even know that was back there. Holy shit, that is dirty. In typical guy fashion, I will not clean that whatsoever. I'll leave all that fucking dust there because that's what guys do. They don't give a shit. We put this down here. Right? Oh, Donkey Kong. He uses the banana condom. Remember that? Banana condom time, yes. That was a long time ago. Um, woke up today, obviously, getting, getting ready for the stream. And I said, okay, let me get it going. So I go over to the switch. I push the power button. <laughs> Nothing's happening. Okay. I'll hold down the power button. So I held down the power button for a while. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. This is not a good sign. So I lifted the switch out of the dock. Okay. And I put it back in. And what I noticed is there's a green light that lights up on the dock when this is plugged in. It turned on and immediately flickered off. Nothing. No reaction whatsoever. No light. Nothing! Absolutely goddamned nothing! Nothing works, nothing fucking works. It seems to me that it's bricked. Okay? Enough with Nintendo's stupid gimmick shit that doesn't fucking work. No one cares about. No one cares about this being portable fucking system that needs a dock. So I'm, I'm out 60 bucks because Nintendo's fucking hardware is garbage, basically. So as soon as I hear from Machinima, I'll let everyone know what the news is, alright? Now... See, exactly. Now he's like about Patreon, he's like, oh, you people in the Patreons, it's, you know, tomorrow's the final day. I uh, hope you guys are excited for, for everything, dude, okay? See, now Patreon is gonna be the best, okay? See, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, dude. What's up, folks? DSP here, and when it rains, it pours. With all the stuff that's been going wrong this week, of course, let's just compile that with the week in preview having technical difficulties. I don't know what happened. There was no indication whatsoever on my end that the, there was no audio, but apparently after about three minutes of me talking and it working, all the audio cut out, and the audio came back at the end, which makes no sense. Sounds to me like it was some kind of a glitch either with the computer or OBS studio. I don't know. 
But I'll have more info for you in one more week's time when that poll is completed. Peace out, everyone. Holy shit. It's better to fucking work this time. Let's do this. This is like zero damage. What the hell? Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome to the continuation of Horizon Zero Dawn. Unfortunately, today I've been having a ton of technical issues, okay? Uh, I just recorded for a good 15 minutes, and for some reason, OBS, my capture software, did not work properly. So I lost the 15 minutes. I don't have it. I don't even have it just to upload or share with you. But I'm annoyed that it fucking didn't record for whatever reason. Alright, we're gonna continue on right now. This really sucks. Alright, is it working again? <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, once again, if you're watching this on YouTube, I know you. OBS messed up again. This is the fourth time today that OBS messed up. It's obvious something's going on. Either the program screwed up or my computer needs a restart. I don't know. Oh my god! You guys are gonna believe this. My fucking OBS fucked up again. Dude, I'm gonna lose my shit. What is wrong with OBS? I can't get OBS to work today. It just, it just fucked up again. Dude, I'm about to fucking smash some shit. I'm so angry. Why the fuck isn't OBS working, man? That whole part that I just recorded didn't record at all. You get real angry, man. I'll All right. do what I can for Uthid. New quest. But what about you? Oh my god, dude, guys! I can't record anymore tonight. I can't record anymore. It's not working. I can't record anymore tonight. OBS is not working. Again. I can't. I don't know what to do. This thing does not fucking work. It's a piece of garbage, and I don't know how to fix it. So I'm gonna I am still gonna play for about a half hour, but I can't stream, guys. I'm sorry, I gotta end the stream. As stupid as this is, this is a piece of garbage fucking program. It really is a piece of shit. Because this is a something changed. Something changed in OBS apparently that it just does, it keeps erroring. Every time I try to record and I stop the recording, it just freezes and doesn't record the video. Thanks everyone. Good night. Sorry. <laughs> Number 8. Say what you see. <laughs> the Death of the Cock. So it's funny because last year I started a new channel on YouTube called KO Gaming. Now, as you know, if you've been following that channel, this channel is for edited style content. People want me to constantly be putting out new gameplay content, but then they also want the montage. I'm like, but when am I going to do the montage? If I'm playing all the games, reviewing all the games, doing this stuff, when do I have the time to go through a 20 to 30 hour long playthrough, right, and edit it all together? The answer is I don't. There were a couple people during the month of January who actually contacted me and said, Phil, we're loving your Return to Dark Souls. We'd like to know if you're going to do a montage. And basically, I went back to them. Honestly, I was like, I would like to, but I don't know if I'm going to have time. And these people said, well, listen, we'll do it for you. We'd like to do our, take our own takes. So for the past few weeks, these people have been working on this. And I just got my first submission last night. And it was great. It's, it's actually the person who worked on the Deaths montage. Okay, we've got we've got some music, some copyright infringement, copyright infringement waiting to happen. I keep golf at the same. Don't get caught. Two places. I didn't know you could do that. What the fuck was even the person's thought process of putting this music in here? This is sad when we're analyzing the music more than the actual video. Okay, this music is really obnoxious. No, yeah, yeah, this, uh, this music is not good. It doesn't oh suit God. the gameplay being shown at all. And they put some nice music in there and stuff like that. 
Well, considering we already have 18 deaths and it hasn't even been two minutes. Yeah, that's true. That, that We're going a little fast here. Wow, yeah. I don't think they've Dude, covered all the deaths either. During a jump. Probably not. What the fuck? Condensed to 25 minutes of all the deaths, and they actually did include, um, for example, if there was a boss that I died a million times to, they included when I did beat the boss. So yeah, the, the shitty thing to do is I can't even talk about the game because it's going so fast. Yeah. What the fuck? Yep. Most this is how you don't play is uh, thrive off of his like anger and shit like that. Oh, this good. is just like death over and over yeah. again. Nothing. Yep. Like, you can barely hear Phil. He's setting the standard for the quality of videos on KO Gaming. The hot new product. Yeah. I don't care. I don't think the person who made this video cares. But really good, and you could tell they put a lot of time and effort into it. This wasn't something that was like, oh, I worked on an hour and it's done. No, they probably spent some upwards of 20, 30 hours re-watching the whole playthrough, finding every death, editing it together, and all of that. You are where you are now for one reason and one reason only. You are a loser. I don't know what's going on with KO Gaming, but people don't seem to be checking out the stuff I'm putting up there. It's a little disappointing, you know? And then you've got literally like ridiculous amounts of comments from these immature dumb fuck kids and of course they thumbs down the video to like 200 thumbs down immediate thumbs down why why i'll tell you why because it's a comedy video that's not a nasty negative video about me it's not a this is how you don't play negative video about me so immediately it's not good enough and it has to get a thumbs down right Now, a video campaign from DSP Gaming's KO Community Creation. Shout out to Secret Life. That I'm basically going to start a new initiative for KO Gaming, where people who watch my gameplay and they really like a certain playthrough or whatever, can make a montage. I'll watch them and if I like them and I think that they're up to the quality standard, I'll put them on KO Gaming, but I'll edit in a lot of plugs and information for that person. So for example, this person who did the death montage, what I'm gonna do is take their video and put my own intro on it, saying, you know, welcome to KO Gaming. So it's basically free promotion on a channel that has over 20,000 subs. The videos on this channel regularly get anywhere from five to 10,000 views minimum, okay? That's kind of the advantage of you doing a montage for KO Gaming, all right? That has been a video campaign from DSP Gaming's KO Community Creations. Again, shout out to Sacred Life. I've officially sponsored slash approved of one of these videos. This is how you don't play, where people take my gameplay from one of my raw playthroughs, they edit it into a funny montage that basically makes fun of me, uh, calls me out on a lot of stuff, roasts me in a lot of ways. Just think about when you see a, a, a roast of a famous comedian or a celebrity. That's kind of what This Is How You Don't Play is in a lot of ways, okay? Shame on you if you've ever made a This Is How You Don't Play About Me. Well, I can't dodge any of this. Can't move. Couldn't see him. <laughs> there we go. I could have done better if I just known that I needed to use heavy attacks to hit him. I would have beat him quick. I didn't know that, though. <laughs> <laughs> An underage kid just hit on me. Why don't underage too? Alrighty, that's going to be it for This Is How You Don't Play Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, everyone. What the hell is that? <laughs> So 
so if this on its own was posted on the internet, oh, it's great because it makes fun of Phil, it's good content, thumbs up. But because I approve it and post it on my channel, oh, thumbs down. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. And retards. They're just so dumb. Intelligent adults are like, wow, this is great. Phil's embracing. This is how you don't play. This is a big change for him. This is, you know, good. We'd like to see more of this kind of thing. And then you got the other idiots. And it's just like, oh my god. I, you know, I, some people wanted to submit these, these montages and stuff for KO Gaming. And one of them, incidentally, was this is how you don't play. And I watched this video and I'm like, this video's good. That was the greatest this is how you don't play of all time. Uh, I'm going to keep releasing it on KO Gaming. I think that this community creations program is a great idea. I think it's going to work out positively in the long run. And uh, I think it's going to be for the best. I think people are going to like it. People, go watch the this is how you don't play. It's the best one yet. And it's on Phil's channel. So that's also a good thing. Good job. All right. Now, the elephant in the room, ladies and gentlemen, is that if you haven't noticed, I haven't had time to do reviews. I filmed a few reviews in August slash early September. They were Sonic Mania and, um, oh my God, now I'm going to bring for What was it? Oh, Agents of Mayhem. I, they were spoken word reviews where I just feel myself talking. I uploaded one of them to KO Gaming, immediately got demonetized. KO Gaming's blacklisted, the channel's dead, folks. I'm not seeing reviews whatsoever as a priority, and that's a shame because I know some people say you've been reviewing views, games for so long and you have some of the most honest reviews. Folks, reviews are not very popular right now on YouTube. The ones that are popular are the edited ones, which are the ones that are getting demonetized, and I don't have time to work on those. And, you know, putting in every video, you know, I was putting in, what, how many videos? Like two, three major videos a week. Plus, I was doing the, uh, the community submission videos for $200 a month. Um, it's not going to work because, like I said, I can't. I cannot put in that time and effort anymore and then go out of business and, ha you know, not be able to do this daily anymore because of it. That. That'd be a ridiculous choice. I released my review of Sonic Mania over on the King of Hate vlog. Now, that's a big change because I used to put all of that kind of stuff on KO Gaming. But sadly, KO Gaming is effectively dead thanks to YouTube uh, basically blacklisting the channel for absolutely no valid reason. Number seven. I'm going to hack you. Okay. A privacy group called the Digital Citizens Alliance says they found a hacker boasting about having credit card numbers. They posed as a customer. As a result, other, comp other programs can find the gaps in between or even masquerade as the legitimate programs to find the data. And it's all very quick. This is true, and, and it's true that you guys have actually broken into his private email account. How difficult would you say it is? Uh, you mean out of 10? Sure, out of 10. One. The Hacking Games Shall we play a game?
Oh, hold on a second, everybody. Hold on. Give me a second. Looks like the stream chat has frozen. At least on my screen. I don't know if anyone's chatting. My stream chat is not moving at all. It's completely frozen for like two minutes. I'll have to give it a look in a second here. You know, I'll give it a look right now. All right, I'm gonna have to reload it, I guess. It's completely frozen. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. It's claiming that I'm connected to my wireless network, yet I don't have internet on my laptop. Everything's working for now. Let's see if it keeps working. Uh, if it stops working again, maybe there's something going on with my internet line downstairs. I don't know. All right, so this is, I think this is the next to last mission we're about to do, whatever it is. <laughs> Pretty sure. Well, it looks like the internet might have screwed up again. Let me see here. I think it screwed up again. Yeah, I'm, I'm having no issues at all loading anything. So it must be the wireless of this laptop that's that's messed up. I didn't. I never even knew that. Huh. I'll be back in about 15 minutes and we'll go from there. All right. Thanks, everyone. I'll be back shortly. So a couple of days ago, I guess it was like two, three days ago, apparently uh, one of these, you know, websites that tends to dump like information from hacked websites and stuff like that. I think it's called, I think it's called Kiwi Farms, but don't get me wrong. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I don't know. There was some random ass website over the years that I registered for. Um, and when I registered for this website, I used a password. It was some gaming related website. It was probably like, you had to log into some gaming related thing that years ago this password used to be the password i used for like everything all right when i moved out here over three years ago apparently i used this password as the initial password to register for a lot of my accounts all right so for example uh you know the stupid comcast business internet is had this password yet my regular comcast account for television did not my regular Comcast account used a different password. So apparently I just, you know, when I moved out here, I was probably so stressed out with the move and everything. I had a brain fart and I started using this old ass password as my password for a bunch of important things. But then they got into the Comcast business account and they were able to find out the business phone number. And also they didn't have access to say things like, for example, my IP address, but they had access to resetting the modem. So that's what happened earlier today when we were streaming. They were sitting there, oh, let's let's be a dick to Phil. And they were clicking reset modem, reset modem. So to my knowledge, I'm good now. To my knowledge, everything's fine. It has anything to do with like having an in-person. <laughs> oh, what the fuck? Hold on. Uh, I guess everybody is uh, saying uh, rest and rip, so it might not just be me, so. Consoles or whatever, and you got the shaft because, you know, you didn't get what you wanted out of it. What the fuck? His stream is dying. What the fuck is going on? What the fuck? Yeah, it's offline. It's offline. I think he's getting DDoS attacked. That, that it's going to be a situation where these consoles are not going to be he's, massively underperforming. He's still are, talking. He doesn't know what's going on. Not going to be. He has no uh, clue. He, I, I'm serious, he has I no clue it. what's okay. going on. I believe. Um, DSP apparently has what's it called again? Um, a holding company that he uses called DSP uh, Enterprises. So. He set up a company and he uses that to get his um, loans and stuff like that. To get his business loans. He claims here that he has engineers who work for him. No risks or threats anymore. Threats. My back is basically much, much better now. Now, of course, there's a whole other can of words. My th oh, the stream's dead again. No surprise there. Social media and so much of our it's life. Still, now, he's Google, just talking. He's still talking. In person. He doesn't it's notice a whole it. New can of worms when you open that up to a social aspect. I, I couldn't imagine growing up as a teenager now. 
There's DSP Enterprises and he claims that he has an on-site engineer. What the fuck is that? I apologize for having issues with your service. I'm happy to get this resolved. Great, thank you. So yeah, so it turns out DSP has a holding company or a shell company and he pretends that he has a a team of engineers who work for him. Sunk in into the door and wouldn't come out. The car had, everything was falling apart. The car was about to like explode when I got the BMW. <laughs> um. Stream's down again. Stream's down again. Okay, so he claims that he lives in an office building. That's called DSP Enterprises. So I apparently own a shell company called DSP Enterprises. And apparently I've been using this shell company to get tax write-offs for years. And apparently the federal government IRS has audited me and has found out that this shell company exists and is now saying all those write-offs are invalid and you owe, you know, a ridiculous amount of back taxes. Now, this is the most preposterous thing I've ever heard in my life. This is seriously like... <laughs> huh? It doesn't make any sense. It's just so insane. There's no, there's no company named DSP Enterprises. Number six. Twitch and chill. So we did a Twitch and Chill stream. It was really fun. It was seven hours of interactivity with people in stream chat and playing various games. I played games from Jackbox Party Pack 1 through 3. So there was a lot of interactivity, the most interactive thing I've ever done ever on the internet, seriously. Um, it was so weird and different, but a lot of fun, and people who've seen it so far... I said it was absolutely amazing. And we were all having a good time, you know? That's the thing, being lighthearted and kind of laughing about myself, it was hilarious, it was very entertaining and fun. And allow me to draw you into our little world here. It's just you and me. AKA Troll and Chill. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are starting off today's Twitch and Chill interactive stream with some Jackbox Party Pack 3. We're starting with Quiplash 2. The title of Rob Schneider's memoir. Vote on your device. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Schneider's memoir. I never masturbated on live stream. Oh. A great line to use to insert yourself into any conversation. Hmm. Nah. Okay, choose your favorite. How a drunk rabbit would embarrass himself. Okay. It's voting time. Alright. What are mannequins always thinking? Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm three teams are donating to me. That's gonna win by default. The other one is dot dot dot. It's lame. Even though that's an insult to me, it's better. People go to far lengths to get back money that DSP stole from patrons. There you go. DSP begging for money. They're all the same. How are you going to vote when they're all the same? 12 year old shitting out money on Patreon. There you go. Dude, everyone is exactly the same. Your next prompt is a really cool thing to be reincarnated as. Amsterdam Cinema. Oh my god. I can't even start with John Riddles' line. Ooh. If your nipple said names, what would they be? Here we go. John Rambo joined the SOK. Okay. Rambo and Howard hate you. There you go. The worst excuse Mark Kent has given Lois Lane so he could go change into Superman. Vote on your devices. Skip the dinner or any family function for fall four, okay. Here we go. Let's see the responses. Close to points Kojima World Order? Order? Oh come on! Get the fuck out of here. What the hell? These are the answers. Look at this. <laughs> oh my god. 
There you go, the typical, uh, the typical troll insult answer. Boy moves across the country into financial ruin and begs for money to pay bills. Yes, this must be it. Again, only voting for each other. This stinks even worse than DSP shitty commentary. I said it was going to be two or three insults. Here you go. DSP is one porn hub, everyone. There you go. And it links to the actual porn hub. <laughs> that you can't beg your viewers to pay for all of your medical bills. There you go. DDoS attacking DSP in the last round. There you go. Another troll answer. So glad I ditched DSP for a real man and your breath doesn't taste like failure. Okay. I filmed my DSP tries it at 17. Oh, he put my address. How nice. The fat, lazy, man child, narcissistic NBA dropout jerking off in front of. Sorry, couldn't okay. read it. <laughs> they give a ton of time to answer these. Porn for tots. Oh, now we got racial slurs. That's not right, man. All right, nigga. It's time. <laughs> not even close. Everyone is an insult, too. New <laughs> rule, you should automatically be arrested if you blank. And vote. Now you know what everyone's voting on this fucking one. A dramatic line that Gilbert Gottfried definitely couldn't pull off. Gilbert Gottfried couldn't pull it off. Vote away. Uh... What? Uh, I love underage pandas, okay, even though it's not true, but okay. What Leanna looks like when she gets drugged by the paramedics for her mental illness. Well, I think we know who, who put that one in. Holy fuck. Off to Seattle, ditching my family and friends for a teenage girl. There you go, even though she was not a teenage girl when we moved. I swear Leanna was 18 at the time, dude. I leaked her nude, though, on my desktop. Okay. Make videos about sitting up a Christmas tree while your girlfriend is tweeting about wanting to be older by Tyrone. There you go. A great way to cheat on a sex education test. What? Get to voting. Of course, another obligatory troll answer, which is false, fa informa false information. Ebag, masturbate, or date underage girls you know like DSP's entire life. But wait! There's more! Oh my god! Three flips. Get out your gold, silver, and bronze medals now. Leanna, I don't even know what that means. Leanna's fake engagement ring. Huh? What does that mean? I never gave her an engagement ring. So I don't know what that even means. I don't understand. Is there something in the detractor circles about a fake engagement ring? What are you talking about? I didn't give her an engagement ring. What? Why is it gonna win? It's stupid, some stupid inside joke that I don't understand. What does that mean? <laughs> it won, and it makes no sense whatsoever to anyone who's not into an inclusive circle jerking circle. That made no sense at all. What does that mean? Is there actually like a, some kind of a, a, a joke about an engagement ring? Huh? Leanna posted it on her own Twitter. What are you talking about? It's about one of her Twitter pictures. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm completely lost. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. It makes zero fucking sense. And yet it ends up being the big winner at the end of the game. That's so fucking stupid. Well, that was a good round until the final one, which is completely ruined by dumb fuck kids who have make no sense. So congratulations, morons. You're idiots. That was really dumb. <laughs>
Who's Army? This guy fucking sucks my dick. Guys, who cares about the trolls? Why do you guys, I gotta honest, I, why do you constantly talk about the trolls? You ever notice I don't care about them, I don't mention them? Well, if you saw nothing, you're blind or you're an idiot. So let's see, ban this idiot. Go ahead, keep saying it. Connection was good. Nope. Sorry, Get you're that banned. Ass banned. You're a complete liar. You're gone. <laughs> Every idiot. Here we go. Every idiot who says that was a good connection is gone. So Get keep saying that it. Ass banned. Keep saying it. If you're an intelligent human, don't watch what they do. And then you won't ever care about what what they fucking say or do. I don't. So here's the premise of what I'm doing. As you see, I'm calling it Dark Souls The Redemption Run and beat Dark Souls legitimately. What that means is no hand-holding. I want to beat it legitimately, just like I did with Bloodborne, just like I did with almost everything in all the other games. I want to try to do it by myself. Ugh. All these idiots in stream chat. Phil's reading stream chat. I haven't even looked at stream chat in like a hundred years. No, now I'm really mad. X Game opponents, well, they don't have to look at stream chat. Oh, uh, fuck you. It's my stream chat. If people want to come here and be positive, they have every fucking right to be. And sorry, they get priority over people who want to be dickheads. Who the fuck are you to tell me that people who want to come here and be positive and support me can't chat? And they should ignore it. Dude, get the fuck out. Seriously, if that's your attitude, leave right now. I'm serious. Leave right the fuck now and don't come back. Playing a 40 plus hour playthrough that takes me two to three months to finish for a game that 300 people are watching does not make any kind of sense. I'm sorry. Listen, there's games that I want to play. You know, I work hard. And we got an idiot in the stream chat. Who says, I only work four hours a day. You're a complete moron. You can get the fuck out. Phil only works four to six hours a day. Boy, you, you have no concept whatsoever at all of what something like this entails. You have no concept whatsoever of what this job is, and since you don't, you should not talk out of your anus. Because all you're gonna do is piss me off. In regards to Danganronpa 2, I wanna put out a good playthrough of it. I don't wanna have a playthrough where I'm <sighs> having losing my voice sounding like shit, especially because you know how much dialogue is in Danganronpa 2. How, if I physically cannot read the dialogue, how can I do a fucking playthrough of the game right now, genius? Should I hire someone to come to my house and read the screen for me? Should I get text to fucking verbal translation of the PC and have it read it like a robot? I mean, it's just, it's, it's childish logic to say that since people pledge to my Patreon that I should be dedicating all my efforts to doing this playthrough. You have to be a moron. My voice is still fucked up and here, I, how am I gonna finish this fucking game, dude? in my throat did a 10 bit cheer and says have I checked out the discord server yet and I just don't have time to do it I honestly I don't have time to do it I don't even have time to do anything with one I'm too busy I don't know much about discord I don't even know if I'm gonna be on there I told him I said dude you can set it up if you want you know because I know he's a long time fan I know he knows a lot of fans who maybe want to use a discord server but I told him I was like dude there's no way I can I can even think about messing with that thing now I'm way too busy I'm juggling three games you crazy I am agreeing that because of this extenuating circumstances that Super Mario Sunshine will be played. However, it will be played at a later date. Typically, January is one of these very, very slow uh, gameplay months. So I'm making this commitment so that it's a win-win for everyone. We get a fun Patriots Choice playthrough now that I can actually monetize and doesn't burn everybody out. And then... Come January, I play Super Mario Sunshine, which it seems a lot of people want to see. All right, Riggers won. Did a temperature here and says, if you're playing Metal Gear Solid in January, when is Sunshine? I've been looking forward to that since October. Well, the bottom line is, 
I just played two Mario games. No, I'm not playing Sunshine right now. I get to a position where I can afford to do another playthrough that I'm not going to get paid for, all right? That's not the situation I'm in right now, okay? Uh, it's just not. I can't. I need to be making money to pay these bills, or else I can't even be here anymore to stream. He's not fulfilling his promises to the patrons. He's done it again. He's stealing money, and these people are pieces of human shit. I'm literally banning every piece of shit who's in the stream chat who's just there to talk shit. You're gone. Because that's all, I, see, I know who these people fucking are. And they were waiting the entire pre-stream for me to answer this question to try to spin it negative that's something that I did wrong. Fuck you. No, really. Fuck you. And I mean that. Fuck you. You fucking pieces of shit. You're only here to make me look bad. Phil already lied to his patrons again. He's now playing Super Mario Sunshine like he promised. He's a fucking a thief and a liar. And here he goes again. He needs your money to get out of another situation when he doesn't fulfill his promises. Bullshit. Literally 100% slander. Bullshit. There's no fucking truth to any of that whatsoever. They're morons. They are dro mouth drooling morons. Anyone who literally has said Phil is not fulfilling his patron promises, he stole money because he's not playing Super Mario Sunshine, is a fucking liar. And I swear to God, those fucking people, you shouldn't, not only should you not give them the time of day, you should fucking lambast them and tell them what disgusting fucking people they are for lying. Because that's all they're doing. They're lying on purpose to make me look bad. And it's, especially during this season, the holiday season, when everyone's supposed to be holly jolly, the first thing they do is turn negativity against me to prove their true colors, that they are vile human beings. sleep schedule is still all screwed up and in addition to that my eating is all screwed up uh, because of all the life changes that happened to me this year you know it wasn't an easy thing in particular the one major change that's really screwed everything up for me is that I don't have anyone cooking dinner for me anymore I don't really have time to make any kind of complex dishes or anything like that because <clears throat> I just don't have the time you know I finished my stream around 5 p.m. and then I'm back on stream around 7 30 so I only have about two hours because it takes about half an hour or more to get those videos uploaded you know I don't have anyone else to lean on anymore or anyone to help me with anything so it's been pretty stressful I'm not gonna lie um of course now we got to get someone in the stream chat who wants to turn their own personal uh, story into you know derailing the chat and I'm not gonna put up with it so I'm just gonna warn you right now you know war dog leader there's no way for us to know if what you're saying in the stream chat is legitimate or not you could be someone completely making stuff up or you could be completely legitimate Appreciate the sentiment and sorry to hear about a family member that passed away, but no one wants to hear you make this about how I'm in the wrong for being stressed in my life because you have a situation that's worse. Um, that's ridiculous. Go run your own stream if you want to do that. We don't, you know what I mean? Like, he's trying to make me look like a villain because he says someone passed away and he's doing better than me. Wow. Well, good for you. Maybe you're a stronger human than me. Then Maybe you're a better person than me. Good for you. Go run your own stream and everyone could go watch it. This is my stream. People want to know why I wasn't here. And I'm being honest. And I'm not going to have someone come in here and I'll try to make me look fucking bad on a stream that's my gameplay stream that's for me to share my, my what's going on with me with you. Oh, well, my life is worse than yours and I'm better than you. Well, good for fucking you. Go on your fucking pedestal. You know, go bronze yourself and make a fucking statue to your greatness because you can do better with meals when you have something worse than what's going on with me. Like, what the fuck? Seriously. Get the fuck out of here, man. That is so fucked up that people would do that. Go ahead. You know what? Officially, for tonight's stream, you are the king of suffering. <laughs> You're the king of suffering. Good for you. Basically, to, to put it in more context, what I was going on about, right, was for about 15 to maybe 20 minutes of Phil's pre-stream, he had done nothing but complain about how he can make meals and stuff like, oh, I haven't got time for them. I'm thinking, wait a minute, you have a two-hour gap between your morning stream and your night stream. I was saying, look, I just lost my brother, you know, I'm still able to fucking function mm -hmm. i'm still able to go and make my own meals and it was basically a whole of this is this motherfucker 
is sitting here bitching and whining that he cannot make pasta. It was lit. It was fucking pasta. Right. He was going on so long about fucking pasta. And yeah. I was making things like you can go make eggs and toast. You can make cheese and toast. You can get fucking packet noodles. But he's complaining that he can't eat. And then he's saying, oh, I don't get to sleep until fucking midnight, blah, blah, blah. I wasn't even trying to make it that I have it worse. I was just pointing out, you know, I've had something worse happen and I'm still functioning. I'm still going to my uni. I go out. Um, I've got mates in the US. I talk to on WhatsApp I on, on, on online. When he started, the stream chat went fucking... Like, they went... They were, like, shocked. There was, like, nothing but wows. Going, I was like, whoa. What the fuck is happening? Like, mm. why is he going like this? Um, I think there might have been one or two subs even reacting to it. I wasn't even trying to do it as a, as a fucking what were called detractors. I was just doing it as someone's like, oh, my God, he's whining about fucking making pasta. Right. Like, come the fuck on. He's 30-odd years old. He fucking does a knowing moment on a stream where he went and got Liana up, who was right. sick... <laughs> to make dinner i was yep. like are you incapable of living you know own up man the fuck up i was trying to make a point that you know i've lost someone that can never be replaced and i'm doing well i'm still making my own dinner i'm still you know doing all this and that he there he's there himself whining about the mm-hmm. random shit because he has no one to cook for him. Yeah. He's not a fucking invalid. You know, he's a 30-year-old year old man who should be able to make himself some fucking dinner. You know what I mean? You know, look at me. I can never have my brother again. I will go on my life, never see him again, never talk to him again. You know, throughout my life, there'll be moments where I'll do something. You know, even a smell outside. You know, we used to play Pokemon together. I still play Pokemon. We used to play Pokemon. I'll never be able to play Pokemon with him again. We used to get the other. We know those two games. I would get one. He get the other one. So we'd always have all the Pokemon. And yeah, I know it's sad to hear all this, but it you know it it needs. I felt that it needed to be talked about because I didn't want to leave it for a while, and then people not know the context. And that's why I put a long, massive comment in the YouTube video that D. Davidson made. Because I felt, yeah, people are saying, oh, you probably hasn't got brother. I was like, no, I do. And this is why. I still go out. I still go to uni. I still, I go have, I have a job as well. I do that. Dude, you have not got it worse. I'm not feeling good. And I come back to stream and someone has to try to literally bait me to make me look bad. And then, you know, of course, people spinning shit out of proportion of what really happened. Uh, you know, people circulating a clip on the internet of me supposedly insulting someone whose brother died, which is not what happened. What really happened was this guy came into my stream chat, claimed that his brother had died, and that he was handling it better than I'm handling my own personal shit. He's able to, to cook meals for himself and get sleep, and I'm so much better than Phil because I had my, my, my family member die, but I can handle it, but Phil can't handle stress. This is literally what he was saying in my stream chat. And people were going to him like, dude, what are you saying? Like, why are you bringing up your own personal stuff? This isn't a competition. I call him out, but because I call him out, I'm the villain, right? Go fuck yourself. No, really. If you're that close-minded to that stupid of a person to think that, number one, that guy was telling the truth, and number two, that someone who's taking their own personal relative's death as a way to make them look better than me on my stream, when people are asking me what's been going on with me, why did I miss a stream, and make me look like a weakling or a villain, you think I'm the villain? Go fuck yourself. You're an idiot, and if you believe that stupid shit, go right ahead and believe it, because you're going to go right along with the millions of gullible idiots out there who believe everything they're fucking talking told seriously it was obvious troll bait and i was just trying to get rid of the guy so that i could focus on my stream and get to gameplay but people want to spin it and blow it up they didn't see what he was actually saying in the stream chat all the inflammatory shit he was saying and it's probably just a fucking troll idiot anyway and by the way permanently gone and we don't have to worry about that shit anymore we can focus on the positive stuff okay it's that simple if you're that dumb there's a door goodbye and I've been saying that for years and tons of dumb people have fucking left why do you think they're my detractors now because they're that fucking stupid Number four, the man-child who cried gout. 
I know you guys, you know, you're mad. <laughs> you can't use bits. I'm just saying tips still exist, and I could really use them. I'm just saying. Okay. Money Problems, the 2017 series. It means I can't pay my bills, all right? And that's the bottom line, the situation that I've been in ever since the middle of last year. Guilty or not guilty? The bad news is I'm stuck with this fucking condo in Connecticut, which, by the way, things have not been going well at all anymore. So I want to get you everyone caught up on that because I haven't talked about that in a very long time, have I? So, the way it worked was, I had this condo in Connecticut, I lived there, then when I moved across the country to Washington State, my aunt was staying there, which was good, because my aunt needed somewhere to stay. Um, and she was paying me some rent, now it wasn't enough to cover the whole cost of the mortgage and the dues and everything that I owe on that condo a month, but it was defraying the cost of it significantly. So maybe there was a few hundred dollars a month that I was losing, and at that point I could afford it. Keep in mind, this was before the false copyright strikes, before the bullshit that YouTube did in 2016, before any of that, I was able to piss away a few hundred dollars a month on a loss for this condo in Connecticut. My hope was that in a few years after being out here in Washington that the real estate market in Connecticut would turn around and go back up. I'd be able to sell that condo in Connecticut. I'm not even looking for a profit. I just want to get rid of it so that it's off. It's, I'm not pissing money away on this condo anymore, okay? Which is really significantly financially hurting me every month. Um, and then I would be in a better position out here in Washington. So all the home values have fucking plummeted. I'm not even kidding you. This is the truth of the matter, folks. My condo in Connecticut, I bought it in 2009. Today, it's worth, it's worth, excuse me, less than half of what I paid for it. And I don't have any money to pay off this mortgage. You know what I mean? Yeah, if I was filthy, a filthy rich YouTuber, like a lot of these people, oh no, I gotta piss away 50, 60 thousand dollars to make this condo go away? Sure, here it is for my savings. It doesn't exist. My aunt got really sick. My aunt sadly, She's not doing so well. Right now she's in assisted living. She couldn't live in the, my condo anymore by herself because she kept getting hurt. She kept falling. And I can't get a renter there. And I can't get rid of it. I, excuse me, I can't rent it because I don't live there anymore. My parents can't do that kind of work for me. Right now, having this condo in Connecticut that I can't sell and I'm getting no rent for it is costing me over $1,500 a month. So a lot of people say, I don't understand why Phil has no money. As soon as I get paid, $1,500 goes to a condo that I, I'm stuck with and I can't get rid of, okay? So what I'm doing right now, I'm in the process of trying to sell the condo in Connecticut for way lower than what I paid for it and way lower than what I owe on it, but convincing the mortgage company to take way less money. The other thing about it, and this is the big negative about it, apparently it's going to kill my credit. I'm saying for those of there out there who think this is a joke, that this is a fucking scam and a fundraising scheme, and I just don't want to go get another job, you don't seem to understand the reality of the situation is that I have no out. Um, <clears throat> according to my mortgage company, all right, as of the end of 2016, there's some new regulation or law or rule, they didn't make it clear to me at all, that you cannot do a short sale on a house that has an FHA loan on it. It's pretty nuts. I'm pretty much stuck. It is my new car, ladies and gentlemen. And there we go. Guilty or not guilty? What is going on everybody? Phil here, making a video that once again, I don't wanna make. Um, I got, you know, pretty much news that's devastating if if something happens. Let me put it that way. Um, and let me, just so everyone knows, this is not a threat to my YouTube channels. This is not a threat to my Twitch. It's nothing like that at all. You know, I'm not getting sued, nothing like that. Um, but it's something that I can't fully tell you about. And that's what kills me the most right now is because there's something negatively affecting me really deeply and I can't tell you about it. I could dance around the subject, but I can't give you details. What happened today was as I was streaming, I finished my, my gameplay stream and then I got a notice and I was like, what is this? And basically it made, I'm not even kidding you. This has happened twice in my life. 
where in the pit of my stomach, it feels empty. It feels like pain, like emptiness, like I'm sick, like I'm gonna vomit, okay? It happened once when I got the notice, when I looked at YouTube and it said that all my ad revenue had plummeted and I wasn't getting any help from anyone about it and I thought I was gonna go out of business. That was, that was number one. And it happened again today, okay? Point where it's like, at this point in my life, I'm just, I, I don't know how I'm gonna keep dealing with this shit moving forward. Like every, it seems like every six months, some crazy ass, stupid fucking, out of my control bullshit happens that screws my life over somehow. This is something that I don't know if I can talk about it or not. All right, well, let me put it this way. I know I can talk about it, I just don't know if it's gonna make sense to me. I barely could eat dinner at all, and I was all, by the time I was already so behind, by the time I ate dinner, it was already gonna be after eight o'clock, so I, I canceled my second stream today. But guys, I'm in a situation right now where, I mean, I'm being real with you. Uh, this could be a situation that's like worst case scenario, meaning I might have to sell my house um, and move uh, in my past, and I got over it. Not to say that it ever goes away, because depression, for those, this is the thing people don't understand about depression, okay? It never goes away. You'll always have, if you, if you really get deep depression, it will never go away. It will always be there. That little voice in your head saying that you're not good enough, saying that you're a bad person, saying that, you know, you're an awful person and you don't deserve good things and you don't deserve anything. And, you know, it, it, to the extreme extent with some people, go kill yourself, which is the absolute worst it could get, right? I'm not asking you, honestly, for anything financial. I'm not asking for it. Not to say that that shit wouldn't help, but I'm not. I can't anymore because you guys are giving so much. You guys are coming to streams and I see you tipping, subbing, and pledging. And I see you coming to YouTube and watching the videos. And I you see you guys doing everything you could do, uh, you know, to the point where I can't ask you anymore. You know what I mean? I don't want to lose everything, guys. I work my ass off. And you may say, Phil just sits around and plays games. You're right. That's at the essence of you describe what I do. I sit around and I play video games, but it's work. Uh, it's work to be here every day for you on stream and you know it was a lot of work to adjust my, my method from a YouTube only style to a streaming only style and even if I work my ass off and I do well I can still it seems like somehow life is finding a way around my hard work to fuck me I seriously I'm not even kidding I need to win the, like the lotto I don't know what else to do I I can't work any harder if I work any harder than I'm working right now I will be physically affected physically ill and I, again, I really wish I could tell you everything, but I can't. I know it would be the bad choice to do that, okay? Here we are. This is the hipster hotel, the very hipster artwork you can see here, iron and wine. Guilty or not guilty? And so, when I started way back when making money doing YouTube full time, I got a tax attorney to be my full time tax attorney. Now, I didn't just get any old tax attorney, I did research. 30 years experience, actually taught accounting and finance at universities before, okay? When I lived in Connecticut, you know, from 2011 to 2014 when I was doing this as a full-time job, my taxes were done through him. And I was like, man, I could literally leave the state of Connecticut and move anywhere that doesn't have a state income tax, or I could move to a state that has a much lower income tax and pay less like taxes, and what would be the loss? You know, I work from home. What would happen if I were to move, say, to Washington or to Texas or to one of these states that doesn't have a personal income tax? He said, basically, that was it. You just don't pay personal income tax. You just pay the federal. You're good to go. Since I'm moving to Washington State, doesn't it make sense that I should get a tax attorney out here who basically has more knowledge of the state laws and stuff like that? To you know, they'll be more knowledgeable about that. So basically, I'm going to say goodbye to you. You know, this after this year of taxes, once I move to Washington in the summer. Uh, you know, I'm gonna basically not need your services anymore. That makes sense, right? And he came back to me and said, oh no, I'm still able to handle all of your tax concerns. No problem whatsoever, you'll still be fine. One year I think I paid him, I'm not exaggerating, $1,500 to do my taxes, okay? So I noticed about early on this year, probably early to middle 2017, I started to get all these extra mailings in the mail 
right? Magazines, um, ads, trade papers. Uh, I'm talking like construction magazine. And I'm looking at this shit right now. I know I didn't subscribe to any of it. And it says on it, on the mailing, addressed to DSP Gaming. Hmm. And I'm like, why am I getting all this mail I never signed up for for DSP Gaming? And like I said, it's all business-related, trade-related mailing. Because whoever this was that did this signed me up for, like, every possible free publication that there is. I get a letter in the mail stating that due to uh, some information that has come across the desk of someone, that they suspect that I, Phil Burnell, own a business called DSP Gaming, and I'm doing business in the state of Washington, but I'm not doing it properly. I never registered the business, which is legally required in the state of Washington, and I'm not paying taxes. That if you're self-employed in Washington, and if you fit certain criteria, like you make a certain amount of money, you get income from certain sources, or you receive certain tax documents from the people who you have contractual agreements with, you're required to register as a business and to pay this business tax in the state of Washington. I, immediately I read it, I'm like, well, I don't own my own business. I don't, you know, I, I'm not registered. I don't own my own business. I don't. Legally, there's no business out there that's called DSP Gaming. DSP Gaming is just a YouTube channel, right? There's no business called DSP Gaming. It doesn't exist. So, at that point, I tried to get my tax attorney from Connecticut involved. All right. I tried to say, what's going on here? You know, this guy is saying that maybe my, I, should qual I qualify for having to register as a business and pay business tax and all of this. What's going on? state and the real reason that we got a whiff of you is because you're on a mailing list for business small businesses in this in the state I send him the form and he goes Phil I don't know if I'm comfortable filling out this form I really feel that at this point since it seems like you know this might be something serious you should get a tax you should get a tax attorney in the state of Washington that basically whatever this tax is going to be for the year of 2017 which we have no idea yet it hasn't been calculated yet is going to be due on January 31st of 2018. What's it going to be? Could it be a thousand bucks? Three thousand bucks? I don't even know what it is. And again, I don't have it. What did I ever do? What did I ever do to anyone on this planet that they would literally try to end me? This is what this is. The country of Afghanistan took me $50. <laughs> A pimp ass bitch took me a hundred dollars. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All of your mothers just took me a hundred dollars. Oh my god, he's got another hundred dollar tip from the Kings. He stay strong. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh my god. Fluffy shits just tipped me a hundred dollars. Thank you, everyone. I seriously gotta get going. Who negate just took me ten dollars as happy Thanksgiving, Phil? Thank you, everyone. It means I can't pay my bills, all right? And that's the bottom line, the situation that I've been in ever since the middle of last year. Guilty or not guilty? Before we dive into number three, let's have a bit of a timeout. A dog's breakfast.
get stuffed. What a tosser. Ah, oh, terrible. Complete rubbish. You ripper. At number three. That finally, the biggest group of people who didn't like me, the SOK, finally disbanded. And now I'm finally seeing a little bit of alleviation of everything that's going on. The Fall of the Sons of Kojima. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 95th episode of the Sons of Kojima podcast. My name is Fred, and I am being joined by a cavalcade of cocksuckers, a menagerie of motherfuckers. First of all, Mr. Nomad, Mr. Evil AJ 2010, Miss Schadenfreude. We got Mr. Lupol, Mr. Torres, Mr. Freddy Fuck. Streaming extraordinaire, Mr. Magel. What's going on? Yo, 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 what up, you freaks and rejects? Don't talk to me. What's up, everyone? What up, everybody? Thank you for getting that one right, but hi, everybody. <laughs> so disgusting. Oh, really? You why, is, still why does Phil get his own chair? Was he too big to be able to tie to <laughs> somebody else and they not have enough rope for that? <laughs> Dude! Dude! <laughs> Oh my god, he leaned his head back! You have to go fuck yourselves. Good night. Peace. No. See ya. <laughs> Later. No. So today I'm live streaming, and uh, my live stream goes dead. Dear DSP Gaming, you have received a copyright strike against this particular video, and uh, you can counter notify it or whatever, blah blah blah. But your ability to stream has been revoked because you have a copyright strike against your DSP Gaming account. So anyone putting a copyright strike against the channel is not looking to make a point, is not looking to even troll so much than to end me, to say I don't want you to exist anymore. I want you to go bankrupt and lose all your money and lose your house and lose your well-being because I basically want to hurt you physically is what this says, okay? The thing that was put as a copyright strike against me today was a piece of fan art and I'll even show you uh, the claim that was put up here. I think this is it. Hold on. Here it is. This was the claim put up, yes ladies and gentlemen, for The Witcher 3 pre-stream from May 19th, 2015. So if you go back in there, you'll see it's the montage of fan art that I talk over for the pre-stream. Guess what it was? It was a picture of me sitting on my couch, okay, laughing, and someone had superimposed the game box of The Witcher 3 pushing me like this. turn you're, you're fucking me around and now you're telling people garbage about me that i collect calls and shit you like do that. though it's the truth really it's the truth hmm. uh, i did i did fucking uh i did blackmail pretty good with that cry call oh god faggy fox or fred fox for short but this guy as soon as he got into the group there's been nothing but conspiracy theories, tinfoil hat nonsense, and utter garbage. There we go. There's oh, a bite of butter on that. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah dude. <laughs> <laughs> a smaller guy to have trouble with 10 pounds of mashed potatoes. No, He's no, handling I, the shit I like it's opposite, nothing. Dude. Look at Oh shit, he's dying. Oh, oh shit! Oh, oh shit! Fucking oh, 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 He said, oh god, oh. and he dipped. 
So he's got to go throw up the fucking... <laughs> Alright, so now what we need to do is... We... What you need to do is, is... need to weigh your vomit. Yeah. <laughs> and then... There. My vomit's already flushed down the toilet. Uh, you can still yeah, get it back, though. It's not instant. Yeah, go... yeah. What if he threatened you with the gun and made him... And he made you receive oral sex? <laughs> I... <clears throat> How many times do I have to say it in this conversation? You can't. You can't. You can't kick him out. He closed the door behind him. All right, ladies and gentlemen of the twenty-four. I would like to make an official announcement. What's up? <laughs> Mr. Loophole has been asleep for fifteen minutes. No, I'm not. Oh my god. We did it! He made it, motherfucker! He's got it! He evidence on the SFK channel, care. and the people can make their own I don't care. They want to see me eat shit. I get it. They want to see me eat shit. I don't care what they say. They've been against me the whole fucking thing. I'm fucking sick of it. It's fucking you ridiculous. Have to do is stay awake for I don't give a shit. I'm fuck fucking awake, okay? Fuck, man. God, <laughs> fuck, shut the fuck up. At the top so is was, facing the ground. Yeah, so uh. we know that he hasn't refilled it with something. I mean, we just have to. Okay. You know. All right. <laughs> 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 There he goes. Yeah, keep it down. Keep it down. Keep oh it down. You got this. You got this. No, no, no. Keep it down. 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 Put it out. He's got it. Hey! Got it. Oh wow. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, the puke. Oh, oh, oh shit. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. <laughs> And yes, I admit, I was a fucking retard for being in that group. We were retarded for doing all that shit. We were an idiot. Uh, like he was trying to get people to make exposed videos about me and telling people like let's take down the SOK and just general stuff like that. So it just from, exactly. from a lot of point of view, it seems weird to see divas uh, pop up in this sort of stuff. Really? No, 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 no. I'm going to talk to him privately and I'm going to tell him and show him the recording of you throwing him and his friend Dude Demand under the bus. To save yourself, when you knew full well that you're the one that posted it, and you were given some fucking song and dance about who else has access to the account when you're the one that posted it, and you knew that you posted it. Um, now with that out of the I, way, I'm let's sure you continue. can see from our point of view if we have two former members who want to quote unquote take down the SOK uh, and expose us and have people record our conversations and stuff like that, especially yeah. when we're talking to people that have made a podcast about us. It, it's just weird. <laughs> just uh, weird. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, what this is, is a comment that I left on one of Ardenas' videos, one of his last videos, that says here, Please don't use my content on your monetized videos. I do not wish to contribute to this at all. I see my patrons only section screen cap used, even uncredited, at 13 seconds. Now, I'm not exactly sure uh, what relationship we had with this person. We've talked about... Um, Ardenas before gave our thoughts on it. Never really said you should boycott Ardenas. We never told people to do stuff. We just said this is our take on it. Then, a couple minutes later, we look here, and if you look at the second screen cap, we've got a video from Ardenas explaining the situation. His title The Reason Ardenas Got Taken Down Fuck You, Fred Fox. Hello, Fred Fux. I made the intro for Ardnos. I closed his channel and gave him the copyright strike. I'm not a DSP fan, and I'm not a DS, and I'm not a fan of any DSP haters. I'm neutral and enjoy very much to watch this site. You don't plays. Is that essentially the person who was making intro videos for him found out that he was making money off of his podcast, decided to copyright claim him. It's as simple as that. 
none of us have spoken with this person before. Uh, the first interaction I had is when I reached out uh, and talked to this person today after I saw him in that video after the fact. So, yeah. Thank you, Evil Crash, but I need you to move a decimal place over. And thank you, <laughs> people who are doing this. Um, getting a job outside Twitch and you... Come on, all right? <laughs> I'm opening up to you here to give you an opportunity. So this is... Everyone that donated to the charity actually got the same link to this. This is a update from Charity Water. Completed May 2017. Uh, in Ethiopia, 150 people were served with water, and they drilled a well. Thanks to you, this community now has access to clean, safe drinking water. Additionally, our local partners train community health workers and local leaders to disseminate positive hygiene and household sanitation messages to their respective community members. But as you can see, there's a plaque here, Sons of Kojima, and that I, I was kind of blown away by. I didn't know that they were going to do this. They didn't tell us that they were going to do that. So yeah, that, uh, that happened, and I don't think we had an opportunity yet on stream to sort of thank everybody for that and, uh, you know, to really just tell you uh, how much this means to us to uh, have had the opportunity to do this, you know, I mean... Charity was to boost Fred's reputation. Yeah, uh, I don't see why not. And it was it was a made to you know, hey, we're not awful people. Look at Phil. Phil has never given to charity. We're give, you know. He wanted Sons of Kojima to be at e celebrities. He wanted to uh, best example. He wanted to be the next Mr. Medicare. That's not happening. <laughs> yeah, he wanted to be the next Mr. Medica. He wanted hundreds of thousand people to adore him and shit. He wanted to be known as the guy that was bulletproof. Now, Fred, you're the most active. I mean, the way you acted, I really do believe this is your life, doing your YouTube channel and the podcast. But you've become the thing that you accuse other people of doing. Delusional. Paranoid. You see enemies at every doorstep. I'm starting to think that you really have mental issues, that you see shit that ain't there. And everyone else, and it makes people want to do shit about it. And it makes your cult-ass following, your hardcore fans, target people and make them pissed off and jaded. <laughs> you know, I hear some people uh, show when they are like, so much contempt for them, I'm like, I just can't figure it out. You guys fear fight? Fighting it out. Yes. Nice. Which one is the best? Would that have been cool if you had like a boxing match or something, but you're so far I away, right? I would beat your ass, dude. Not even yeah. joking. I would. I would beat your ass so bad, your fucking balding, retarded, fat chubby self. I would beat the fuck out of you, and in a heartbeat. You, you know, let me let me put it this way, Fighter. Just because we're still on the internet in real life, the shit that you have done consistently to me in my personal life, I would beat you so fucking bad you would be in a hospital for six months drinking out of a straw. Not oh, even fucking real kidding. Life, and, and the no, fuck you, dude. You don't want to talk about boxing matches, you fucking ass. How, how tall are you, Brian? Go, go do another cr- oh, yeah. Oh, how tall are you, Brian? Go is this, you, is this, uh, I'm is this a hard to fuck your mom, bro. How's that sound? Oh my god, there's a tough guy today, Brian. I don't know, bro. Hey, you won the box. You said boxing Brian. match. Who's, who's fucking talking about tough guy? You got up. Let's get set up for a boxing match for charity. Brian. <laughs> Serious. Uh, Cage, match it out. Oh yeah. There's no reason. Are we getting the conversation get the if you're not gonna apologize? So I'm gonna wrap it up if you can't apologize. There's no point in talking anymore. 
I'm gonna speak my word and I'm not gonna lay down to your lies to do, do, do like this. We can speak right. and you well, can speak. Alright, well, we'll try, man. I'm gonna wrap it up. It was good talking to you, Boone. It's incredible. Incredible. Just not incredible. The one that, I'm not the one that's not being reasonable here. You're ridiculous. Fucking pussy, bro. I'm a what? You, you, I can't, man. <laughs> And the, the, See, this, the is not, for them. this is what I was telling you earlier. I'm gonna wrap it up yeah. if you not do as I say. Please, nah, this please is, we'll I'll stop leave you this, dude. This is what I, this is no, Viter, Viter. I'll leave you at this. This is what I was telling you earlier. I said that you're the kind of guy that'll only get uh, understand what you did was wrong when someone tunes your ass up and puts you in a hospital bed for a couple months. Like that's the only way you'll get it is by getting your ass beat to the ground and then ex and after that because you won't understand logic, reason, or rationale. You won't be empathetic to the person unless they beat the dog shit out of you. And that's what you need. And you then need I'll be empathetic. That's what you need. That's, what you need. that's why, that's why you're co what's coming to you is what's coming to you, man. Karma's a bitch, and you need your ass beat. So I'll leave it at that, because you can't even apologize, and you're going to call me a pussy. And when I'm being but corporal nice, you can't and all this other bullshit, you're a fucking bitch, dude. You can only sit there you and can't, say shit like You that don't dare having a debate with me when it's fair. You don't dare. I, I, I am very sincere what I had to say. You give no fucks about what I had to say. So take care. I appreciate it, Boom. We tried. Pussy. Uh, pussy, Bye, I'll see you. I'll see you in pussy. January, buddy. Don't you worry, bro. Go pussy yourself, Brian. Okay. Pussy. Yeah, but you can't tell me that. You can't tell me. Stop over here. You understand? Shut up. It's like... You're talking about people, but I just don't care. You understand the word? Shut up. Shut the fuck up. Due to the fact that I still feel like I'm friends with these people, even though I feel like I've been used by the people at the same time. Um... Or at least one of them in particular. Um, I do want to say on the record that I like Fred and I like the SOK a lot. Um, I still see them as my friends, uh, even though I feel a little bit used by Fred uh, in, a, in a certain way. A bunch of strong arm mafia shit. Corrupt shit. Why would you like these people behind the scenes? They could be entertaining, but they could still be pieces of shit. the whole leaks and everything with like you know Fred Fox and all that yeah no no I, I know what happened uh, I kind of kept up with it uh, to a point I know that they had their, their uh, they dealt with DSP and then there were leaks and then it splintered apart they, they got too serious about it like if you want to uh, if you want to fuck with somebody online fine if you want to have some laughs fine but if you dedicate right. if you dedicate every fucking moment to doing something like fucking with DSP every day day after day yeah years and years oh my and years, god it becomes too. It becomes you become too fucking focused on it. It's like you've got blinders on. You become a loggy about it. Um, oh yeah, that's exactly what they're calling Fred Fox on Kiwi Farms right now. I, I've told I because I've spoken to Fred in the past uh, a while back, and I told him what I basically told everybody else that finds himself in the situation: fucking relax, right, right. Uh, diversify. <laughs> you know, go make yeah, fun you, of other shit. You know, you, you, DSP will be there if you want to come back and make fun of them. I don't know.
but like problem, in the Boone. I mean, what the fuck is wrong with you? In the you're not answering a great question. He's asking you why you're doing this. You're, oh, for the lulz, uh, you know, I don't recall. Dude, be a man, grow a fucking pair of balls, and just say why you did it. Because for the lulz, like I said, oh, dude, what are you fucking? Like dude, there, you are twelve. There is no other reason. You are a fucking twelve-year-old. I did it for I, the lulz. What the fuck is wrong with you, dude? So we got in a call with Fred, and we tried to talk to him, end all the shit, right? He told us that he was not the one behind the dislikes. He told us that he did not go to our channel and bought it. Well, uh, look at this screen cap right here. This screen cap shows this bitch ass motherfucker saying to hit up our podcast, to hit up our shit with dislikes. Fred Fox, he treats himself as this charismatic, outstanding leader who does no wrong, but behind the scenes, he's a fucking fragile little boy. He's like an ex-fucking girlfriend who could not take the fact that people were branching off from the Sons of Kojima. A little, little bitch that rides on the coattails hey, of Phil. Okay, whoever you should probably get out. Yeah, and All you right. ride on the coattails of us, Mr. Shitter. Oh, do I write on the yeah, cocktails of you? you? Yeah, you oh. do. Oh. Mm. Did that did that sting yeah, a little bit when I fucking and told you, tried, you that? And uh, you tried to latch onto our fucking show that you think is dis is is not tasteful, right? I don't make money off your fucking stupid show. I didn't say you make money. You said I latched onto it. Yes, you did. If you're going back on yes, what I was talking did. about earlier. You made it your fucking goal to come a shitter, shitter, shitter. Let me oh. Get yeah. Let me, get five, let me get five seconds of attention off of saying shitter for the thousand times yeah. in a row. Yeah, and there was people that thought it was funny. Hmm. Nobody thought it was funny. Oh. People thought it was annoying. Okay. Well, that's good for you. No, that's you're just good all for sensitive. You. You're just all pissy that's over all something. Got, those people. That's all you got is shitter. Yeah, but you still latch off uh, another YouTuber if you really want to go there. If you want to so go on. You're latching off us. No, I'm not. I and don't here fucking you hardly are mention an SLK you. SLK fan server. How do you feel? Seriously, let's talk this out. You. Why Why are you upset? You. Because Over you've what? been making comments, I've been making comments back, and all you've been saying is, oh, but you're sensitive, Fred. Okay, so That's I have stupid. a little joke. We. How come this is an issue now when in the past we've joked around and never been issues? Because why today, is this, why everything is this a, I've said back to you is, oh, you're so sensitive, Fred. Well, you, you've had you're a pissy... Regular. Okay. Fred, you've had a pissy attitude all fucking day. Every time I joked with you, you got all pissed. I you, ever you. since you came in here today, you. you've had a shitty attitude. That's not true. And I'm just trying to have fun and have a laugh with you. No, that's not true. Every time you've said something to me, I responded to you. Just well, like your that. attitude today has been real you. shitty, dude. I don't know if it's about last night's deal with the fucking King of Pole that's pissing you off, and if it is, but whatever. But, you know, don't fucking bring it out on me because I'm trying to have a joke with you, and you're getting all pissed because your attitude has been shit today. Sorry, I hurt your ego, man. Sorry, I hurt your ego. My ego. Okay. Back in July, I had an interaction with this guy. Where he said, like, hey, back in July. I just, you know, I'm not interested in the Phil stuff. I'm going to unfollow you guys. I don't want you guys to think that I'm upset or anything like that. I just, uh, you know... I just not interested in DSP. So, all right. Thank you for the heads up. I appreciate it. I wish you the best. You dox people, you spied on people, and you and up. You are a fat, flat out bitch, right? Did you know that this motherfucker tried getting uh, loopholes private information, right? But you know Caesar. Did you know that Fred doxed you? You know he fucking spread fucking Tevin's and Renegade's fucking ex's info on other websites like 8chan and shit. Friends being thrown under the bus, wild speculations, and I had to branch off because of this. I had to get out of this group because I couldn't stand the hive mind mentality. I don't want to hear no cardboard crybaby bitches 
over this man who tried to dox my ex-girlfriend who had nothing to do with this horse shit. I didn't take the fucking pictures of his fucking bitch on Skype being naked and him posting it because he wanted to one-up me and shit. I don't want to hear any fucking virtue signaling for this guy. Is, is with Fred is that he's a wannabe MMA bitch. The only fucking exercise that he gets is going to Taco Bell. The dude admitted to taking like three fucking weekends of classes at a fucking dojo. Okay? I get more fucking exercise walking to my mailbox than his MMA training. So don't believe his MMA shit. And you just don't have that leisure. You just talk about a guy all fucking day. Talk about some Overwatch. You're done. It's not hard to do that shit. You need to man up. You need to stop acting like a bitch. You need to stop taking this DSP internet stuff too seriously. There's nothing wrong with having a group of friends and forming bonds or anything like that. I'm not talking about any of that stuff. I'm talking about this stupid KGB CIA presidential shit that you think you have going on in that fucked up mind of yours. Did you know that this motherfucker was in Skype calls 19 hours a day? 19 hours a day! I would come home from work or college, and this motherfucker would fall asleep in the call. He spent his fucking life in that group. His life. 20-hour calls, obsessing over people. A 20-hour battle plan. He made bullet points and PowerPoints about Sam. We're going to attack Sam. We're going to do this. We're going to uh, lay out an offensive on Twitter against her just because she called Fred a bitch. Why are you hiding, Fred? He called me at 5 a.m. ranting about shit like a fucking schizophrenic madman. He's supposedly ditching out on family time to hang out with us when the member in particular was not really hanging out in calls because he had shit to do. If you had a loved one that was sick, if you had a family member that was dying and you were in our group, the sons of Kojima thought that you were conspiring against them. What do you do? What do you do, Fred? In September, I'm going to be working for my local government. Oh, are you? Yeah. Good for you. Yeah, Congratulations. good for me. I'm going to make a difference in the community. How about you? Now, the script is flipped. People don't like the Sons of Kojima because they think the group is being led by a terrible person. Bravo! Kudos! Hats off to you. You are on a fucking forum with Chris Chan. You're pissed off that you got a lol cow thread about you on Kiwi Farms for the rest of your life, and you're really shaking in your fucking boots. You deserve it! You fuck people over, you backstab people so many times, and it was just a matter of time before they turned that knife around and stabbed you. Heartless and sterilized that foot longer apology was. Mm -hmm. He thinks he was doing shit like that. Yeah, he thinks we're idiots. I mean, it's like, hey guys, I fucked up. I'm so sorry. If DSP did this shit, he would get roasted for two years. So let's treat Fred like the DSP bitch that he is. Everyone, get the fuck off the Sons of Kojima. It's a dead fucking sink. If you're a fan, just let it fucking burn. I don't care if you're entertained. It's not worth interacting, becoming a member, and finally seeing people's true colors. It took a year for this stuff to come out, but finally, the dark has come to the light. And hopefully, it shapes your perception of what this anti-DSP group can be. Mr. Medicare, tweet at Mr. Medicare. Tell him Che will give him everything about fucking Fred. Everything. You never liked Alice. You disrespected her. And when I was with, and when I was in Florida with her, and excuse me if I crack up, when I was in Florida with her in the hospital when her leukemia relapsed, you still came to me and you said that her fucking medical conditions weren't real, that she was just an attention whore that was lying about her medical issues. What about that, Fred? You know, you never apologized to me for that. In fact, what, what was you going to tell people that she faked her fucking cancer? What do you got to say about that now? She's six feet in the fucking grave. 
What are you going to say about that now? You haven't come to me man to man and apologize about the shit you said about her. And what was you planning to do when she passed away? You wanted to make a podcast where you put her name in the title and you put her fucking picture in the title so you can get fucking views off of a, off of a memorial podcast. You should be dead instead of her. You say she's faking her medical conditions. Why don't you go tell her fucking parents that? Yeah, big talk coming from the guy that is so scared to show his fucking face that when your fucking feet got leaked, right? When you posted that picture about your fucking legs and shit, those fat fucking legs, right? With no muscle, no MMA training, nothing, right? Nobody knows what you look like because you're too scared to show yourself. That one's for Alice. You disrespected her memory and you disrespected her even... She was in a fucking hospital bed. You thought she was a part of some anti-SOK group when she was taking a break. She was in a fucking hospital bed. I was fucking with her in the hospital. Those three months I was with her before God rest her soul, it got worse and she passed away. You fucking told the whole group that I was fucking spying on motherfuckers. Alice told you in that secret group that she had leukemia again. There's, there's more to that though. So after you sent him that... Um... I was like, I'm just not going to talk about it at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go outside. I'm going to go in my car and I'm going to say, oh, shit, I'm running late. I'm going to be about 30 I knew minutes it. late. I Free fucking street. knew it. I fucking knew it. Uh, oh, and also uh, Fred is running late. He was on mobile. He got stuck in traffic in the pre-stream if you weren't here. So he should be back sometime soon. I don't know. Alice has unfortunately passed away. Um, long time fight. Uh, like seven year battle with leukemia. We speaking of Fred, he's here. What's going on? Oh, what the fuck? Yeah. What's up? Uh, look, oh, look at it. What's up? <laughs> Little traffic. Uh, hey, what the sorry. I hey, I tried my best. I tried to call in with the phone, but that fucking sucks. Um, <laughs> but uh, hi everybody. Uh, what are we talking about? Uh, we're talking about Perserner three. Pers yeah. My favorite something that is oh my goodness something near and dear to my heart. Well, and it wasn't just Fred. That was Fazfuck that was involved in that, too. That came yeah. out later. And yeah. God knows where he's bunged off to. Yeah, it's it's going to be Che, it's going to be Fred, it's going to be me as the, the guest. Wow. Yeah, that's going to be cool. It's like a world record for how many streams you're in. No, I wish I would. T uh, you know, I wish I could talk to the SOK more often. Why don't you? I don't know. They they talk to me all the time. Oh yeah. So this was about a week after she passed away. I'll be honest. He posted in the main group, "Oh shit, something happened" or whatever. And he didn't tell anybody what it was. Mm -hmm. So I messaged him because he made it seem like a big deal. I asked him what the deal was. And then he sent me a website of her obituary. And he said, it's real. Did he dox? He doxed Alice. I'm not letting him live that down. He doxed the person that I was going to marry after all this. This motherfucker. How did he get that information? Because oh. I never told him. She never told him anything. This fucking piece of shit. Well. I think he I think he said before he posted it that he was looking through Florida obituaries is what he said. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? Hey man, what did you find that was important? Alice obituary verified by parents Facebook 100% real. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? That's verbatim. I'm sorry, man. Fucking with her on her deathbed and shit when she went into the fucking uh, the uh, the fucking coma or whatever, mm -hmm. and they, they couldn't save her and shit. And he's gonna fucking. I was on break, man. Fucking told this because he was so fucking terrible. But it's okay. You didn't know, man. It's not I, your fault. I know. I know. I know.
Okay, he doesn't have a life. He don't care about his per. He don't care about friends. The thing that he wanted most in this world is to be an e celeb, and he wanted to have a picture perfect reputation of being a model citizen of some fucking community. So every time you hurt his reputation, you hurt him, and that's why he's running. That's why he's scared and he's cooped up in his hole. He lives off his parents and he's 28 years old. And he don't do shit with his life. Number two, love is powerful. They fit together, you have one and I have one. Means I want us to be engaged. <laughs> Marge, what a lovely surprise. You're here to see me, right? Of course. Look, we're, we're in the final. I'm, we're, we're all happy. We're, 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 we're going we're gonna to make love tonight. Go get <laughs> Hello, everyone. Dark Side Phil here. And with me today is my beautiful girlfriend, Leanna, who also is known as Panda Lee on YouTube. And uh, we just wanted to make a quick video. Uh, as you know, I've been spending the weekend with her because, uh, you know, I was going to be busy on Valentine's. So we wanted to make a special video just to say happy Valentine's Day to everyone out there. The relationship of Phil and Leanna. But uh, yeah, so if, if you haven't noticed, well, first of all, a lot of people are asking what she looks like. And she <laughs> says, I'm not shy. I'm, you know, I'd be willing to jump on a video. So that's why one of the reasons we're doing this. Say Hi. goodbye. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everyone? DSP and Pandalee here, fresh and uh, back from our week-long vacation in Orlando, Florida. Whoa, this thing was like marshmallow. Mm. Oh yeah. What the fuck were you doing? <laughs> oh, we're so relaxing. Mess. It smells like piss. Like strong urine smell. What? In fact, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say it is the best hotel room I think I've ever yes, stayed in. Yes, You're gonna see yes, why. Yes, yes. In honor of her birthday, we are. We had a fun day over at the arcade. We're all gonna have a good day, are we, everyone? Yay! Thanks a lot, everyone. We'll see you for gameplay starting tomorrow and new bits. Peace. Because I'm happy. Clap along if you feel like a room without a roof. No offense, but Phil and I are a couple. We've been a couple for almost a year. We're not breaking up anytime soon. I think that was a brief internet rumor. It says right next to them how much they cost. And if you press X, I buy know, it. I am aware of that. <laughs> I have enough experience, but it still says they're locked. Damn. <sighs> Listen when I talk to you, Jesus. All right, and now I'm going to tell everyone in the chat I had enough of your bullshit tonight. I see everyone arguing with my girlfriend instead of talking about the game, and I've had enough. We're not breaking up. We're not moving in together. We're not engaged. We're not married. We're not having babies. We're not adopting a dog together. No more talking. Let's press the start before I kill you all. Jesus, press it. <laughs>
I'm here trying to play a fucking game. It's hard to concentrate when a bunch of little immature shits get into a fucking argument with my girlfriend. Fuck you. There you go. Subscriber only mode. No fucking chat. That's what you fucking get. Piss me the fuck off. But seriously, to the people that think that they can assume whatever they want and that it's going to be such a big deal, stay the fuck out of our private lives. Because Leanna's brother, my girlfriend's brother, is getting married on November 14th in Pennsylvania. Which means around November 12th or 13th, we have to fly across the country to the East Coast to attend this wedding. So what I'm going to have to do, and I'm, I'm fully, I've already had the discussion with her about it. I said, what we're going to have to do, listen, it's my work. I can't not play one of the biggest releases, if not the biggest release in the past five to six years. You know, and it is, I, I mean, I immediately I was like, of course, right? Every, any fucking day of the year, it's game could have come out. It has to come out the week of the wedding that I can't be here. There you it go. was worth it, because now we can go to the arcade and I can say, fuck you, claw machine. Because fuck those claw machines, man. They're a bitch and a half. All we can get is those damn keychains. It's horse shit, because they have like 500 varieties, and I want all of them. But God damn it, every time we try, we like nudge an ear. And then one time we got one more stuck than it was before. And I don't know how these damn people always get these. I got new colors and I got some more soap boxes for the for the old style soaps. And yeah, oh and I got a little Ooh. sample. I got a little fragrance sample with my order called Electric Lemonade Cocktail. It smells like a lemon lime candy, like a Jolly Rancher. It's awesome. Someone did confirm the scuff controller is a customizable controller, just like the Xbox One Elite, where you could swap parts out and stuff. So I was right in that uh, assumption. I'm sure that uh, Leanna is awake. She's not been feeling too well. I want to make sure she's awake because she has to start making dinner. Give me a second. I'll be right back. Are you fucking kidding me? Did he just say his girlfriend's sick, but he's got to go wake her up to make sure she can cook his fat ass dinner? Holy shit, what an irredeemable piece of crap. Leanna started working super early in the morning, like six in the morning, okay? Well, you know, we'll just have to end the stream early and I can take you to the bird war. All right, well, can I please concentrate? Can I please concentrate now? Thank you. Thank you. I don't understand. Is there something that the detractor circles about a fake engagement ring? What are you talking about? I'll come back later. I'm ready for my apology now. It has nothing to do with, with apologizing. You were distracting me! I am ready for my apology, please. No, you're not getting one. <laughs> so what would happen is, she would need to go to sleep early, so that she could get up early to go to work. And go Why is it gonna win? It's stupid, some stupid Wait, inside joke that I don't understand. The points for you. What does that mean? Leanna would already be asleep. She had to go to sleep because she had to go up to get to go to work in the morning. You're not getting one because you were incredibly distracting when I was trying to do it. Oh well, excuse me. I'm sorry. My feminine wilds are so distracting. They are. To you as a man. This is a, a a man zone. This whole room is a man zone. Well then, guess what? This down here can remain a man. It is zone. a man zone too. Yeah. Well, guess what? There's never going to be a woman in that man <laughs> zone now, ever. For that. Leanna posted it on her own Twitter. What are you talking about? It's about one of her Twitter pictures. It's it fault. is. It's your fault. Oh, well, Jesus, it must also be my fault when the laundry is done, when I cook you delicious <laughs> meals. I'm sorry I am so Oh my god. A human being. <laughs> it's not this it's not that kind of stream. Ever since Leanna and I moved across the country from Connecticut to Washington, we had always intended that we were going to eventually, you know, get engaged and then long term get married. That's why, you know, a lot of people say, damn, doesn't Phil and Leanna, how long have they been together? Five years. We actually started dating in early 2012. So for five years we've been dating, all right, and, you know, we really wanted to get engaged up until, you know, for years. And literally all the stuff behind the scenes fucking me over with the business has prevented this from happening. Now, and that's the thing. People don't realize, oh, Phil's just making shit up. And Phil, uh, you know, he, that's really not a negative impact on him. Those false copyright strikes didn't really affect him. They literally have fucked my life up to the point where I couldn't even get engaged to my longtime girlfriend because of it. Okay? And we're like, 
At this point, there's no definitive time when we can look and say we're going to go be able to go on a trip and, and do the big proposal like I wanted to. So we just did it. We were just like, enough. Enough is enough. How long are we going to wait? Because who knows? There's, it, literally, every time when we were about to start planning this trip, something else would happen. And it would screw us over again. And we're like, how many times are we going to delay, delay, delay our life for this, right? So the good news is, Leanne and I are engaged. We are happy, right? Our life here are hoping that it will improve as our businesses improve. You know, she's working hard making money. I'm working hard making money. My business looks like it is going to turn around and start to increase now. I trusted YouTube system to work properly, okay? Here's what happened. So that was Monday, I think Monday morning or whatever, okay? I think, uh... Uh-oh. Hold on one second, everybody. I'll be right back. I'm getting an important phone call. Folks, I've got a family emergency. It came out of nowhere, and uh, I have to deal with it now. So guess what? Sadly, the podcast has to end. I can't finish my story right now. Um, but I will, when I am available to finish it, which maybe later today I will, but right now, sadly, I don't even have time to upload. I have to actually leave. So I will be going out, and I will be back hopefully later today. Sorry, everyone, that it ended like this. Uh, it will resume at some point. Whew. All right, everyone. Hello and welcome back. Um, <laughs> all right, so here's what happened, everyone. I was sitting here. I was doing the podcast. As you know, I'm in the middle of my story about MCNs, right? In the middle of my story. And as I'm about to get to, like, the climactic part, I get a phone call. I'm like, oh, boy. And it's from Leanna's job. And they're like, we need you to come in right now. Uh, we got a problem, you know. And, uh... Basically, they said, you know, your girlfriend here is uh, not doing too good. She had some kind of a, an anxiety attack, and she needs, you know, she needs something. And basically, paramedics had showed up, okay? Now, Leanna has a history of doing this, uh, having these attacks. It's not her fault or whatever. She's just had it in her life. She's had a bunch of them. But at this time, it happened in the middle of a work day. She was really stressed out, apparently. And boom, it hit her. <laughs> And basically, it was so bad that no, you know, no one could get her to calm down, and they had to call the paramedics. Her cell phone to see what was going on, and she answered, which I didn't expect she would answer. I was like, okay. So I called the cell phone, and she's like, you know, I'm here with the paramedics. They're gonna take me to the hospital because it's so bad. Um, and I said, all right, well, here's what you do: leave the keys with your manager, because what I'll do is I'll take a taxi to there. I'll get the keys. I'll drive from your job to the hospital, and I'll meet you at the hospital. Okay, because we can't, we leave the car, now we can't get anywhere, right? If I think, just, if I just take a taxi to the hospital, it wouldn't make sense. Let's do, let's do it in the right order, okay? <laughs> then as the taxi was about to arrive, I realized, oh crap, I don't know where Leanna parked the car. So I had to call her back and find out where she had parked the car. Uh, but I didn't even call, I texted her, got, her, got a text, all right? Um, but then, get this, so I didn't have, I don't have cash on me, all right? I don't have any cash on me at all. Um, and I'm in a hurry because I know that Leanna is en route, if not at the hospital already, and I need to get this car and get over there. So I hand him the credit card. He goes to swipe it. Oh, I don't know what's going on. And this guy, first of all, this cab, okay. And he's fucking with that, trying to get it to work. In the meantime, I've got a, a display in front of me that says, you know, you know, Seattle he's taxi. Mumbling in another language that I don't understand. He's going crazy. I said, dude, I'm in a hurry. I have to go. I can't be here all day. All right, all right. So he's messing with it. Still not working. Oh, Powers up the tablet. Tries it again. Doesn't work. I'm like... I get out of the car. I go to the job. Get the keys. Okay. Now I got to find the car, um, which was somewhere in a parking garage. I'm walk wandering around a parking garage. I finally find it after like five minutes of wandering around. Get in the car. Go to the hospital. And what a rigmarole this is, okay? So I go, to the, I go to the hospital, and I walk in to the front main area, because I don't know where to go. I don't know if they brought her to emergency. I don't know if she's been already, if she's going to be admitted to the hospital. I don't know what's going on, how serious this whole situation is. I have no idea, okay? So I walk into the hospital. There's an information desk. It's completely empty. There's no one sitting there. You can tell there's four chairs, no one there. I guess because it's Sunday, no one works at this hospital or whatever. So I'm looking around, I'm pacing back and forth. What do I do? Who do I talk to? Finally, I find a phone. It says, oh, lift this phone for information. Okay, I pick up the phone. 
Hello, is this the... Who is this? Can you help me? You know, my girlfriend, I think she's in the hospital somewhere. And they're like, oh, okay, what's her name? I give her the name. And like, okay, she's still over in emergency. Um, apparently they, you know, she's drugged. And she's in this room awaiting uh, a doctor to kind of come, either come in or whatever. I guess a doctor coming to come in to, to check her out. They've got her in a room and I go in and she's conscious, but she's kind of loopy. You can tell they did something, they drugged her or something. Cause she wasn't, in no panic or nothing, you know, no anxiety or nothing. She was just like, oh, like loopy like this, right? Um, so I, you know, obviously you say you're okay. You didn't fall, you didn't hit your head or nothing, right? No, just, you know, she happens. It sucks cause it happens every once in a while. And now this is the worst one she's ever had. So maybe that she has to go see, you know, her doctor and, and try to get some kind of thing to take care of it. Cause the, the and on her left, she's in, you know, she's on a hospital gurney or whatever, sitting there in the room on her lap is a brochure. I said, what's this? I pick it up. Finance it. How to pay finance. It. I'm like, you're in the emergency room. Like you're, they already gave you a way to pay the bill. Do we wait 40 minutes? No. Do we wait 50 minutes? No. Do we wait an hour? No. An hour goes by. No one's come in. No nurse. No. No counselor. Nothing. We're just sitting there doing nothing. And we're like, well, what is this? Is are, are you know are, are we even aware or what's going on here? And you know at this point. She was starting to get hungry because now it's like around the time that we would normally eat or whatever. And we're like, God, this is no good. Now we're going to be, we'll be starving. We have to figure out what's going on. Nurse comes in. Woman, she says, what's going, what's wrong? What's going on? And Leanna says, well, no, she's so groggy. So she can barely talk. She's like, oh, nothing. Yeah, I just want to know what's happening here. Is you know, Are we waiting for a counselor, a doctor, or whatever? And the woman looks at us with like a look of scorn, right? A look of scorn. She's like, you've only been here like an hour and a half and we have other patients. And I'm like... What kind of fucking place is this? We're both hungry. She needs food. She hasn't eaten today. So the woman says, okay, I'll go get you some food. So she leaves. She comes back with a turkey sandwich. It's like turkey on, on rye bread with a piece of lettuce and a piece of cheese and like a packet of mustard and a couple saltines and a, and a, a apple juice and like a little... The apple juice looked like it was like a... And waiting. So anyway, oh, I forgot to tell you. Before the nurse left, she said, the counselor is coming. You just have to wait. You have to wait because there's other people here. I'm like, wow, thanks. The counselor was an elderly woman. You could tell she's probably in her 60s, white woman. And she comes in and asks, did you ever have an anxiety attack before? She's like, yes. Uh, are they usually like this? Well, you know, I have them, but this is the worst one I've ever had. Oh, well, do you have a doctor? Yeah. A primary care physician? Yeah. Well, we recommend that you go see your doctor then. I'm like, Oh my god, are you fucking for real? Are you fucking for real? So now for a grand total, we've been in this place for almost three hours. Oh, well, we had your blood pressure monitored this whole time. Your blood pressure looks fine. Everything looks good. She turns off all the machines. She says, okay, you can go. Wait, that's it? So you're not going to prescribe a medication? You're not actually going to do any tests? You're not going to do anything? That We just waited three hours. All you did is you gave her a pill, which you could have fucking done, and just left her somewhere. That was it. So three hours in a hospital, in an emergency room area, nothing whatsoever useful was done whatsoever to Leanna. They, the drug that they gave her to help her was hour or an hour earlier. That's American healthcare. Now, by the way, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, we don't know what the bill is because we don't have it yet. They're gonna mail it, obviously. I guarantee you it's gonna be like a thousand bucks. I'm not even exaggerating. I guarantee you that bill's gonna fucking show up and it's gonna be anywhere between 500 to a thousand bucks. I guarantee it. The thing is, I know if this ever happens again, I'm going to tell him, you are not allowed to bring her to the hospital. No. No, you get no permission to fucking do it. You can't give her a pill. You want to give her a pill? Give her a pill. And that's it. Because you're just going to waste our time again. You, you didn't help us at all. Liana, if you ever hear these words, this is, it gets better than this most anywhere. You deserve better than this as a human being. And I really feel bad for Leanna because she seriously has mentally oh problems. I feel bad well, for her. Really I feel personal. bad for her because Leanna is innocent <laughs> and you're the one. Here we go. A fucking idiot. <laughs> Where you going? Going to, uh... We'll be back for dinner. Uh, Alright, yeah, text me, but we're definitely still doing yeah. dinner, right? Okay. Okay. Dr. Fate. 
can't hear you. Yeah, fun song. The Superman looks like the actor. Henry Cavill, I think his name I don't remember mm. his name. He was from the Tudor. Mm. All right. Wonder where the hell Leanna is because uh, <laughs> Leanna was at work and uh, never didn't come home yet, and she was supposed to be home. And I don't know where the hell she is. I'm gonna see if I can get in contact with her because I'm a little nervous. Hopefully nothing happened, but let me just double check she didn't come in. But usually when she comes in when I'm streaming, she at least pokes her head in the door to let me know that she's home. You know. So it's out of the ordinary for her to not be home on time and not tell me that something's going on. I could care less if she does something. Or sometimes she goes out with friends and has a coffee or, you know, I don't give a crap what she does as long as she's safe. And that's what I'm concerned about. DSP and Leanna broke up. Uh... It is recently apparent that Darkseid, Phil, and Pandalee have broken up. They have finally run it their course. They have finally, it's over. What's going on folks? Phil here with a special vlog, a quick walkthrough vlog, because the other day I decided to redecorate the place a little bit. As you know, there's been some changes around here recently, and I said, you know what? I just want to make it look fresh or look new or do something different with the house with 400 fast food coupons, because what I do is I look for DSP tries it. Gee, do they have a new item? And if they do, I see, you know, these are the coupons that come in the mail, and I see I have a coupon. Says, do you miss Leanna? Of course I do. Of course I do. It sucks when you're with someone, you know, for two years it was a long distance relationship, and then for three years we lived here in person. Of course I miss her. I mean, what a silly question. But, you know, you gotta move on. You can't live in the past. Already it was over a month I've been, you know, not with her, and you gotta get used to it. Um, he says, is there one thing you would like to change between the two? Yeah, I would have liked that we didn't fucking basically fall, f grow apart and, you know, the whole thing fall apart. But again, I'm not going into details about it because it's our business and no one else's. Basically, since the summer, you know, I've been seeing someone on and off, and the reason is because I've been taking that time to spend some time with my girlfriend, and boom, immediately a bomb has been dropped, everyone's probably like, what the fuck, what, you're doing what, with who, and how, and what the, who the, what, what the hell, I got a sub from someone, I don't even know what it said, Phil's dating and, and oh, it's a stupid insult. These some these idiots. I got it. This is hilarious. You guys will get a quick laugh. So, ever since I announced over a week ago that I have a girlfriend, and I've had a girlfriend since the summer, and I was going to be spending time with her during my time off. These people who they literally have nothing going on in their personal lives whatsoever. All right, they're just so pathetic. They have no personal lives, nothing interesting to occupy them, so they have to get into mine. They're trying to say that apparently my girlfriend is a paid escort. What? They, uh, it's just insanity. So I just got a troll sub from someone claiming Phil's dating an escort named Kim. Sure I am. Guilty or not guilty?
special shout out to YouTubers talking shit about me in vlog videos, uh, apparently yesterday and today, calling me a rage quitter when I've never rage quit ever in my entire entirety of existence on YouTube. Oh my god! You guys are gonna believe this! My fucking OBS fucked up again! Dude, I'm gonna lose my shit. What is wrong with OBS? I, you know, I, some people uh, wanted to submit these, these montages and stuff for KO Gaming, and one of them, incidentally, was that this is how you don't play, and I watched this video, and I'm like, this video's good! I mean that I'm connected to my wireless network, yet I don't have internet on my laptop. Off to Seattle, ditching my family and friends for a teenage girl. There you go, even though she was not a teenage girl when we moved. Go ahead, you know what? Officially, for tonight's stream, you are the king of suffering. <laughs> You're the king of suffering. Good for you. It means I can't pay my bills, all right? And that's the bottom line, the situation that I've been in ever since the middle of last year. Everyone, get the fuck off the Sons of Kojima. It's a dead fucking sink. You miss Leanna. Of course I did. Of course I did. We finally made it. At number one, DSP Gaming. Yeah! What? You're fired from Machinima. Through thick and thin, through highs and lows, I have been partnered with Machinima. Machinima partnered me and immediately I started monetizing my gameplay videos and it blew up and I became super popular on YouTube and the rest is history, right? actually gave me a bunch of, of like copies of games for free to play they flew me to e3 numerous issues with copyright strikes over the years but when i first signed with machinima oh my god every they were giving me the world on march 31st youtube put in place a new algorithm to determine when advertisements play before youtube videos in fact, YouTube has lost a million in advertising money as companies, major brands, are actually pulling out and suspending their advertising on the platform. Chief marketing officers and ad agencies here are talking about what Google has to do for their brands to feel safe on YouTube. <sighs> but a lot of content creators say that in addition to trying to make advertisers happy, YouTube's now gotten extremely conservative with which videos it will monetize, even if they haven't had a complaint about a particular video. They've just found out that their ads are being played before some pretty offensive content, and they want it to stop. It's like companies like AT&T, Dish Network, Enterprise, FX Networks, General Motors of all things, uh, Johnson & Johnson, PepsiCo, Starbucks, Verizon, Walmart, and literally the list is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. YouTube, for some reason, is paying me less for the same amount of work and the same amount of views and the same amount of everything. And there's no explanation why. I've already put in an inquiry to my partner network, Machinima. I have a little bit of information about that to follow up with you in this video. None of my videos are showing up in YouTube search anymore because those false copyright strikes a few years back completely fucked me. Then I lost my contract with Machinima that was based on views and now my contract on Machinima is based on ad revenue. So I went from this income to this income and now this big fiasco we're going to talk about it later on in this video, YouTube ad revenue has plummeted out of nowhere into the fucking toilet. So now my income's boo! What happened is the middle of last year, the middle of 2016, YouTube changed the algorithm of how to count a view. They didn't tell anyone they were doing it. They never publicly explained it, but they changed the algorithm. In January last month, it says I made almost like no money during the month. Like I'm not, like basically about a third of, it, no, I take it back. Originally it looked like it was gonna be a third of my income had vanished out of nowhere. And YouTube was telling me, oh, well you still made a third less than you did the month before. 
And I'm like, this is so fucking bullshit. No, fuck you, Google. How about you do some actual fucking work and you actually reach out to the advertisers and you explain to them you're going to have programs that are going to target certain demographics and certain group of people based off of the information on your site so that they will pay you money to advertise even in a dead month like fucking January. Ad revenue is always bad in January, everyone. Wishy washy, just fucking let it go. It's stupid. My views are down about 13%, all right? Is the amount of money that I made on YouTube from this period of time compared to February, I'm down 35%, more than a third. Basically, my income for February is down about 50 fucking percent from what I would usually make on YouTube, and I made all last year. Why? I wrote my partnership company, Machinima. According to Machinima, my ad impressions, meaning the amount of people who watched ads on a daily basis, is about the same. I didn't go down when it came to the amount of people watching advertisements in February at all. And I was making no ad revenue because everyone was ad blocking. That wasn't the case. According to Machinima, the ad impressions are pretty much equivalent for January and February. So there's no change. People, the same people are coming and watching all my stuff. But for some reason, I made 35% less money. And that's what there's no explanation from. So I pushed back to Michigan. I said, no, thanks for that data, but that's not what I wanted. What I need to know is why is it then, if the ad impressions are the same, why am I making 35% less money? Because that makes no fucking sense. None. Now, I have just a few things to say about this. Number one, is this just me? Is this some bullshit happening to my channel only? I'm in a bad place, man. This is bullshit. Google thinks they're hot shit. And when I see something like this, I say, this is bullshit, and I'm not putting up with this shit anymore. I'm really not. I love doing what I did. I'm not going to let myself get shut down by a bunch of fucking nerds who work for Google who don't know how the fuck to do their jobs. I refuse. They've already fucked me with their bad copyright system and the false copyright strikes. They fucked me by taking my YouTube channels out of YouTube search. They fucked me again, left and right, every few years by changing the algorithms of how popularity on YouTube is calculated, and my ass is so fucking stretched out at this point, it's time to push back. <laughs> I like that for an analogy. Eight fucking years of my life, I'm gonna throw away now because these assholes can't fucking do their job? No! I'm gonna fucking, oh my god, we're gonna figure this out. We're gonna figure this out some way, alright? So anyway, you can tell I'm a little peeved about this fucking issue, right? Because this is my fucking life. I worked my ass off to be where I am and to keep doing this as a job. And I don't want to see it go away, all right? I swear to God, I'm going to have him by the fucking balls. All right. Huge positive news. This doesn't make any sense. Everyone's ad revenue went up in February. So I was correct with my estimation that in February, ad revenue goes from a low in January and it's spikes up because, you know, like I said, there's the Super Bowl, all those ads, there's new movies. I know for a fact ad revenue spikes on YouTube in February, okay? In February so far, you're making a dollar thirty. So that's what's happening. This, if we confirmed this, your channel is making way less money on ads and we don't know why. And here's what Rashinima is saying. They're saying, no, your ad revenue should have gone up. There is no legitimate reason here why your channel should be making less money on ads. It makes no, no sense. Now, what they did say to me was the only situation where they've seen this happen, where ad revenue goes down for someone like this, is if a video and or their channel is deemed as advertiser unfriendly. I'm not doing controversial topics, nothing, none of that stuff. It's just raw gameplay, which has forever been deemed as advertisement worthy on YouTube. Oh, it's Chingy Chang Wang. She's brought along for the ride. Oh, no, 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 no. Speak our language. I'm not in America. In China, they say brings success to few. In China, they say Chang Wang Charlie Chan Shut the fuck up. Care what they say in China. What is it, snake? Nothing. Stupid fucking Chinese bitch. So I've been selected to be the shit stain of YouTube because someone at YouTube is a fucking idiot. Nothing stands out to me here as what may be causing this. So I'm going to send this over to our monetization team to take a look at. I don't see anything that is indicating an issue with advertiser unfriendly content, so I don't think that's an issue at this point. 
Traditionally, drops in monetized playbacks can be difficult or not entirely possible to diagnose given the algorithmic nature of ad serving on the platform. I'll let you know if the team figures anything else out. YouTube is run by a bunch of people who are book smart. They can code till the fucking, you know, the, the, till the fucking moonlight is out and burn the midnight candle and they can make amazing algorithms, but they're not street smart. Meaning, an actual application of that website, if something goes wrong, they are terrible at figuring out what it is. So I don't know how to take that. How do you take an email response like that from YouTube? How does that even, so now I'm being forced, am I gonna be forced off of YouTube and not be able to do this for a living? It's the percent of a video that the average viewer is watching, that people watch my videos on YouTube is much lower than most other gaming YouTubers. Do you wanna know why that is? It's very simple, it's common sense. Because I do raw, unedited playthroughs. When you watch my playthroughs, you're seeing everything in the game. Now, some people want to see that. So they watch the entire playthrough start to finish 100%. YouTube determines who gets what ads based on this percentage. Machinima is saying, in theory, if I go back to the old way I used to make my videos, I could save the business. 2011, 2012 was the first year when you could actually have a video on YouTube longer than 10 minutes. That was the limitation. You were not able to make videos longer than 10 minutes long. You know, I'm playing a session and the session is four hours long. You get maybe 10 videos, okay? Back then, you were talking some five to six videos an hour. Really, it was around 15 minutes each, so. Sadly, Machinima is saying this is maybe what I need to do. If you were to shorten the length of your videos and release shorter videos on YouTube, you'd have higher watch rate. But I don't know how on earth people are going to react when all of a sudden they start seeing even more videos from DSP Gaming in their sub boxes. What the fuck? Really? Is this what people want? The thing is, those big guys, those big YouTubers, they already adhere to that amalgamous formula. Why do you think that they're popular? Because they had the right video length, they had the clickbait, they had the fucking, you know, the engagement rate because they edited everything. So they're not going to talk about this. But this is a huge issue for anyone who's not huge on YouTube. We're all at risk, okay? Not just me, everyone. The last thing I want to see is a mass exodus because I'm already screwed when it comes to what's going on with DSP Gaming. Now if I change my formula and I make shorter videos and now I see a mass exodus from DSP Gaming of subs dropping and people not watching because of the videos are shorter, it's just gonna compound things even worse. Of this relationship with Machinima, it has come to an end, all right? Basically, the, my contracts with Machinima are over. The contractual agreement states that there's a time period that my channels stay partnered, okay? And basically, I'm a free agent again. I have a channel, DSP Gaming is huge. It, get, it still brings in, compared to most other YouTube channels, way more views than you have any idea, I think it still brings in one to two million views a month, all right? You know what I mean? A lot of people contact me and say, Phil, why are you still partnered with Machinima? And the bottom line is Machinima, as a company, has had an identity crisis. They don't know what they want to be. They don't have a focus on anything. And I choose to get partnered with a new partnership company. I'm gonna be making less money because no one's gonna give me the lucrative terms that YouTube was giving me. So you might, I might have a great relationship with them today and then six months later something happens and I need help and I don't even know who to go to or contact because the person who I used to talk to is laid off. The team who I used to work with doesn't exist anymore. And it's like, what happened here? I'm terrified. Honestly, that when I go and I try to partner with a new company that they're gonna immediately look at the negative element and say, well, yeah, you've got, you got money-making potential, you've been on YouTube for a long time, you've got a hardcore fan base that supports you and you're gonna get views, but you've also got this big negative lump over here, right? And are they gonna wanna deal with that? You know, I wouldn't wanna give this up for anything, but it may be at that point now, I don't know, all right? So thank you everyone for listening. Machinima would usually talk to YouTube for me on my behalf, get the information, and relay it to me in a very matter-of-fact manner. In late 2015, Machinima contacted me and said, Phil, the party's over. 
I got a generic email from someone in the finance department of Machinima stating, Phil, we are canceling your current contract as of this date. Here's the new contract. You're no longer going to be in a contract that's based off of views. You're now going to be on the contract that almost everyone on YouTube is based off of ad revenue. And I said, this is ridiculous. This isn't how you treat someone who's been a partner and a top partner of yours for years. I should have gotten a call, at least explain the situation. Why would you stay with them? And I simply put said, because... They're offering me more money than everyone else. I realized it's like that girl who was contacting me all the time about free games and stuff. I haven't heard from her in a long time. I wonder what happened to her. Is she even okay? Within two days, I got a response back, not from her, from the automated log system that I hate saying, she's no longer with the company. Please don't send her emails anymore. So then I said, gee, I wonder. And there were two other people I knew who were with the company at that point. I sent them emails. Guess what I got? Auto responses back. Don't send them emails. They're not with the company anymore. Why I'm not with Machinima anymore? Because you will not believe this story either. All right, so here's what happened. I wrote a log to their system. How can this be? The guy completely blew off my question. Didn't answer. He basically said, oh, well, you know, February is a shorter month. I want a better answer. That is not, that doesn't factually make any sense. I can't pay my bills unless you contact YouTube and find out what's going on. Dude, this is not a valid response. I need an answer from YouTube. I waited another day, no response. I waited another day and I wrote them another log. And I said, you now have me waiting two more days. You still haven't given me an update. I need an answer. They came back and again, blew smoke up my ass. No concrete information whatsoever. And I said, I went back to them again and I said, this is it. I said, you know, I asked you now twice to escalate this issue to management. Okay. So now I knew basically they weren't going to do that. So I said, well, I know what I can do. I can contact the head of the partnership program. Now it had been a while since I had talked to him, about a year. So I wrote, I forwarded the whole same email that I had written to, to appeal to help to the head of the partnership program explaining the whole situation. I sent it to this, this other guy, you know, whatever. And that was all I could do, right? That when this, when they said this, that was pretty much it for me and Machinima. Here's what they said. They said, we would appreciate it if you don't go out of your way to write and contact other departments here within Machinima. To basically stay within the lines. And don't you dare go outside and try to contact anyone else for help. All right. And I literally said, I said, I feel like you've insulted me. And therefore, I'm going to be honest with you. I want you to escalate this issue to management. I don't care if it's your manager, if it's the CEO of the company, whoever it is, they need to be aware that this is an issue going on with YouTubers and people under your partnership program. And I want you to know that if you feel that this is how you're going to treat me as a partner, I don't want to be with you anymore. And I said that in black and white writing in this message to them. And I ended the message in this manner. I said... I do not want to hear from you again. I want to hear from management who are going to explain to me the situation of what is going on. All right. And that's that. The next day, I got a message from Machinima saying, and it was from the same guy. So again, when it gets my wishes, we have decided to execute our right to end a uh, partnership with you on all of your, your channels. Yeah! So basically what they were saying is they didn't want to be in an agreement with me anymore with the partnership. I did nothing wrong, okay? I wasn't in violation of YouTube rules. I wasn't flagged for being advertiser unfriendly. Dozens of times in the past couple of years with issues like this, you're going to yell at me and talk down to me like a child? Go fuck yourself. Yeah, I'm an adult. Sorry, I'm the one who operated a successful YouTube channel. Me. Me. What the fuck is that? I'm the one who puts out the content that's entertaining and has a fan base. Me! I'm the one! Not you! You're the company that just took a cut of ad revenue and protected me from copyright issues. It's not some grandiose thing where you're better than me or you know better than me. I'm the one! At this point, I'm happy to be somewhere else and I'm happy to be doing stuff the way I'm doing. So, let's stay positive for the future. Let's stay away from negative bullshit like that. And, uh, thanks for watching. I know this was a super long video. Hopefully you found it informative and enjoyable. And that's it, folks.
Um, here's what happened. During this transition period when I was leaving Machinima, and I was joining up with Curse. The problem is Curse does not offer managed partnerships. And it's not that I didn't look into it, because I did. I was contacted by a relatively new up-and-coming MCN on YouTube. I'll tell you the name now. The name of the company was Pultavi. We, we're actually a fan of your work. We know who you are. We see that you've done a really long-running legacy of YouTube videos. And we also are aware of the situation with the negativity that you've got this group of people who follow you around on the internet and are negative assholes to you. We know all about that. And we're okay with it. We're going to do you one better. We're going to, you know, do a little bit better in, in the revenue department. But also we're going to offer you a managed partnership. Okay? Because officially as of Monday, I am going to be leaving my partnership with Curse. Okay? Then this new network is going to link me into their network. Oh, fills with a new network. Did you know this is the name of the network? And the network's a scam, and this is a... What are you talking about? How do you know a network is a fucking scam? What the... Tons of misinformation, speculation, and just outright lies that I was partnered with certain networks, and that I was going to do this, and that this network was a scam, and that this had happened, and that had happened. And in reality, none of it happened. Ladies and gentlemen, DSP Gaming and KO Gaming are not partnered with any MCN. I had never heard of them, and I couldn't even find any information about this company existing. I opened the contract up, all right, and it looks, at first glance, it looks like, oh, it's similar to the other contracts I've signed with companies like Curse or Machinima, but then I start to read it, and I realize this is like the most bootleg contract I've ever read in my life. There were spelling errors, there were major grammatical errors. The contract, I'm not exaggerating here, it didn't even reference my YouTube channel. Finally, the contracts kind of look similar to other contracts that I've done with other people. Go to our website, Pultavi.com, and through that website, much like you've done with Curse and other companies, you can register your YouTube channels. And once the contracts are signed and approved and through, they'll link to that dashboard, and then from there you'll be able to submit all your information. The contracts I signed with Pultavi didn't actually have the web addresses of my YouTube channels on them. Therefore, they had never had any legal claim to any of the ad revenue on my channels. I signed the contracts, which by the way, the contracts were only for 30 days. They're 30 day renewing contracts. So every 30 days, you can, at any time you could request to be re released from the contract. And then the other side has 30 days to, to release you. Or that usually the, the, this, when this happens, a company will just release you immediately. Okay. So I did notify Pultavi and I said, let's link KO Gaming. This was Tuesday, May 2nd. I'm mean, follow the timeline here. Let's link KO Gaming and then let's start the process to get into the managed partnership. Oh, they said, okay. So they send they said they're gonna send an invite. So I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Finally, about halfway through the day, this thing pops up and it says, Laveria Media has invited you to their network. I'm like, who the hell is Laveria Media? Jutra technology partner of ours. Um, obviously, they had been in dealings with DSP Gaming. Um, it wasn't a direct communication with us whatsoever. Um, so they had been talking about uh, partnering him or somewhat. He, it may have just been in a crawler. His email might have come up or his channel might have come up and they might have set a template. And that might have been it. He was then, KO Gaming, for example, was linked with our affiliate. And then they had come to us saying, oh yeah, maybe this guy could go managed and from everything that you guys had already done in digging, uh, our own background checks and things like that, we didn't want to work with them, so completely cut off communication whatsoever. We work with uh, a couple of subsidiaries. Um, they could be using technology that we build, for example, or we could be helping them through the MCN process. A channel like that and a channel that has issues should align themselves with a company that wants to support them regardless of managed or not. He can still have the benefits of managed if he finds the right company because managed itself isn't going to protect him. Unfortunately, what happened was when I unlinked my channels from Curse on May 1st, YouTube started a new system. And the new system is you now have to have a personal AdSense account approved and linked to your YouTube channels in order for them to then be approved for monetization so that you can put ads on your videos. And then once you're approved for monetization, then you can link to a new network. 
if his banned AdSense account was associated with that channel prior to him trying to make another AdSense account, it would have picked up on it and declined it immediately. I mean, relatively, but he might have new information since his last one, because how long ago was he banned? But if they do figure out, he's going to have a second and potentially third AdSense account banned, and then he can't run ads at all. Potentially, I don't know, but potentially he could have used somebody else's information to get this AdSense account. Legally, I believe it would mean that all the money that he earns from the channel, if it is his fiance, um, technically all that money is hers and not his, and he no longer owns the channel, she does. Uh, the, the most common thing I hear is that they are promised one thing and they don't get shit. Like they, they, they're promised the world. Like, you know, they're gonna have someone to talk talk to at all times. They're gonna, you know, have all these perks and benefits and they're gonna be able to shoot videos at the office or, or you know, whatever it is. And they don't get anything. They just get, you know, 40% of the revenue taken for a year and then they get auto re-signed at the end of the year and they don't even know about it. There, there's a big difference between a scam and, and something that looks better than it is. I understand why he's doing it and the appeal that it would be, you know, like his banner says, raw gameplay and no bullshit, but at the end of the day, that's going to cost his channel. And typically, it's more well-received if he just did one video with highlights. It will get more views and the watch time will be better. And if you know anything about YouTube, YouTube only really cares about watch time. No, not at all, because essentially his content is just re-uploading. He isn't getting in managed, full stop. Thing would be his masturbation on stream, racist remarks that wouldn't align with whatsoever. It wasn't any communication on our end with him whatsoever. Um, but at the end of the day, it was us who didn't want to work with him and didn't want him. If you want to be with anyone, everyone should probably go to Curse because it's just you get your money and you are protected. But if you're being offered managed, you really need to look into who you're going with. I did. I accepted their invite, and as of Tuesday, May 2nd, KO Gaming was partnered with supposed to be Pultavi, but in reality, it was this company called Laveria that I'd never heard of and apparently had never spoken to any employees of. You promised me the managed partnership. I got this done. Let's get the managed partnership going on KO Gaming. The response I got changed completely from what I was promised before I had partnered KO Gaming. We need to recruit more people to our network and get more people under our umbrella because once we have a full force of people bringing in tons of views every day, then we'll have more clout with YouTube and then we'll vouch for you and we'll try to get you the managed partnership. And I was like, immediately I was like, what? Like, what? Are you serious? Like, this sounds like a fucking stink job of bullshit now, right? I went to KO Gaming and I manually canceled it because there's a button you cancel and then it even says your partnership or your, you know, your link is now terminated, but there's a 30 day wait period legally that we have to have. But if they decide to sever you quicker than that, that's great. Okay. And that was it. As of Thursday, that was Thursday, May 4th. That was the last contact that I had with this company. I actually heard that supposedly someone who claimed that they were someone who worked for Laveria said that they terminated my contracts because they did research and they found out who I was and that I had done unsavory things on stream and they couldn't have that. Completely false. All that information is 100% bullshit. Yeah, so you didn't get banned? You didn't get fired from any MCNs or anything, right? No. You didn't get fired from the cinema? No? No? no. No, I didn't. No, oh, you didn't, no. you didn't get released? And what about Laveria? Laveria, oh what did they do? Oh my god. They dropped you. They no, they dropped didn't. You when I found out <laughs> that video. Oh, yeah, that's the deal. So now, as of earlier this week, it was like Monday or Tuesday, I'm back in the partnership with Curse. I'm happy to report that after we got signed, they, they were able to both monetize all the advertisements on my videos, which was great. And I'm now back to making the decent amount of money that I was making with them in March and April on a daily basis. Today, I received a copyright strike against DSP Gaming, not a claim, uh, like for example, a content ID claim where they take ad revenue or not blocking the video or muting it, an actual copyright strike against DSP Gaming <clears throat> in regards to a takedown notice for two videos in my over 300 part playthrough of Persona 5. The two videos in question, parts 307 and 325, 
are me fusing personas in the Velvet Room. I'm with Curse. And if you're not aware, ladies and gentlemen, uh, partnership networks, unless you're a managed partnership, basically don't put up with copyright strikes. So let's say, for example, that this copyright strike sticks and I can't get it removed from DSP Gaming right away. Um, Curse might drop me, which means no more ads on my videos on DSP Gaming or I have to go back to my personal AdSense, which as I told you guys a few months ago, when I tried to do that, a personal AdSense on DSP Gaming, I was making, I'm not even exaggerating, about half as much as what I make on ad revenue when I'm with a partner network like Curse. So more than likely, this is going to get reversed, I hope. Because if it doesn't, all right, and this strike sticks, I'm screwed. Some people are saying, well, Phil, you're overreacting. How is this an overreaction? If I can't, if I lose my partnership with Curse on DSP Gaming, I'm dead in the water again. But today, folks, here I am. I'm sitting here. I'm live streaming um, Dark Souls 2, Scholar of the First Sin. And all of a sudden, I get two emails from YouTube. Each one saying copyright takedown notice, saying in each email that I've received a notice. So I got two new copyright takedowns today. Anybody say, well, who's it from? Um, supposedly, these copyright takedown notices are from Rockstar Games. All right, Rockstar Games Inc. That's what it says they're from, Rockstar Games Inc. It's legit, here's the email, one of the emails I just got. All right, and there's another one. This one is for Grand Theft Auto San Andreas Part 1, Bully Scholarship Edition Part 1, and Grand Theft Auto 5 Part 1, all three of those from Rockstar Games, Inc. All right. Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Stories Part 1, Red Dead Redemption, the Redux playthrough Part 1, which I just finished, okay. Grand Theft Auto 4 Part 1, Grand Theft Auto Vice City playthrough Part 1, and Grand Theft Auto 3 playthrough Part 1. Again, all from Rockstar Games. Uh, DSP Gaming is screwed. Basically, I just got a notice from YouTube saying if you don't get something cleared up within seven days, DSP Gaming will be shut down, um, which obviously I don't want to happen. DSP Gaming is my lifeblood. It's my long-running YouTube gameplay channel for ten years. Um, excuse me. Seven years. I'm getting confused now. So that's what I'm doing. We're in my player. Now, you might be saying, Sounds kind of quiet. I don't understand why is there no like sound or noise. It's because I have to mute everything. I'm not even kidding you. I can't have any music play in this game. No commentary, nothing. E anything that plays in this game that's not a sound effect gets content ID matched on YouTube. So I can't. I have to actually do it with no music at all this year. You got that right. Wreck the car before we can get to the mission. There you go. We're going to raise so much hell together. I'm not here for thrills, Mac. Is the NXT, uh, the fans are singing the song? I got nothing. Like, the only time I get views on YouTube anymore is if I'm playing a hot AAA release on release week, then people will care, but outside of that... Anything I even try like this, playing in those battlegrounds, you would think, right? Oh, it's gonna be good. No one cares. The thing is, no one cares about YouTube at all anymore. They only watch the same, like, top guys. That's it. People just don't give a fuck about YouTube anymore. If you wanna watch, uh, you know, someone enjoy a game and have fun and be entertaining, you watch them on Twitch. You don't watch them on YouTube anymore, right? YouTube is more about drama and bullshit. I want to watch a drama vlog. You can go on YouTube. Ugh, I want to watch some faggot and insult some homo. You go on YouTube. <laughs> I want to watch some guy throw around all kinds of insulting slurs constantly. Well, you go to YouTube. You want to watch actual gamers play games? You go to fucking Twitch. I have to go now. My planet needs me. That brings us kind of back to like Mr. Gout, right? DSP. Mm -hmm. Phil is fucked. Phil is so horribly fucked 
um, in another two, three years, he has nothing. He'll have a 10, 12 year gap of no employment. He'll have two mortgages. He'll have a car payment. He'll have $25,000 in debt and credit cards. No money in the savings account. No money in his bank account. And he'll have a bunch of fucking anime figurines and fucking video game copies for consoles nobody gives a shit about. He's going to have to move back home with mom and dad. But the problem is, by then, mom and dad are getting up there in age. And they're not going to be able to take care of Phil. They're going to want Phil to take care of them. You know, you've got all these these older people, 50, 60 or so, their health is declining. He's going to basically spend the next 10 years of his life nursing his parents. And when they finally kick the bucket, the inheritance he gets is going to go to pay the debts he already has. And he'll be left with nothing. And then what's he going to do? He's going to be bagging groceries or pumping gas. And that's going to be his life until he's 80. And that's the fucking harsh reality because he's not planning ahead. Phil made a lot of fucking money in the beginning. If Phil was smart, he would have put that shit away in a savings account, in a Roth IRA account. He would have invested it in the market. He would have done something intelligent with it. But he bought figurines and he went on trips and he bought fucking fancy cars and he did stupid shit with the money he made because he had no foresight or pre-planning when it came to what's going to happen when this well dries up. We may have role models, admirers and heroes in the social and media industry. But remember this. Love and appreciate your family and friends around you. And please, look after yourself. You're a powerful and beautiful person inside and out, even if you don't know it. Don't use your mindset on others you don't even know deep down inside. Put your time and energy into something more productive. Your hobbies, your career, and even the people in your life. Let's make 2018 a good one. Just believe. Next time in 2018. I want to play Super Mario Sunshine. I'm not doing it in January, period. My girlfriend. You're going to know she exists. You're going to know she's real. It's it's just a matter of time. But what I'm going to have to do is sell my house. January starts. I start with Metal Gear Solid 2. And I play that. And then when that's done, boom. Metal Gear Solid 3. Oh, you die like this? What? The chair votes aye. The item is adopted with editorial privileges granted as requested. What's this oncoming looming payment going to be on January 31st? I did have an escort here in early December. This is concrete evidence. Thank you for checking out the top 10 worst DSP gaming 2017 moments video. If you love the video, remember to give this video a like, subscribe to this channel, comment below and share this video on the social medias. Thank you for watching and have a happy 2018. Catch you later!